Pan, kanda maga po. We'll start in five minutes. We'll just wait for a few people to join us.
morning, everyone. This meeting is now called to order. Um, let me direct the committee secretary to acknowledge our source persons for today. Thank you, sir. May we acknowledge the presence of Assistant Secretary GHS Sambat. Morning, ma'am, from DepEd. Director Leila Ariola, Bureau of Learning Delivery. Director Enrico Mendoza, Literacy Coordinating Council. Director Marilette Almeida, Alternative Learning System Task Force. From DOF, Ms. Jean Quinto, Chief Research and Information Office. Pastor Efran Pitogo, President Sulads. Good morning, sir. Professor Efren Lubokin, Country Representative, Bangladesh Rural Advancement Committee. Good morning, sir. And from INET Philippines, Ms. May Cinco, Ms. Flora Arellano, and Ms. Proserfina Gorina, Teachers Incorporated. Good morning, Paul. Thank you, Comsec. Uh, this is our second uh, public hearing on alternative learning system. Uh, the first one was conducted last uh, October 29. 29. And during that time, I was asking for a lot of data no? because uh, what we want is, aside from anecdotes, mga naririnig lang natin, uh, we also want to see uh, data, no? uh, particularly on... Um, the alternative learning system itself, meaning, uh, for example, number of students, number of students who pass, number of uh, facilitators, teachers, all of these things. No? Uh, the objective of this um, hearing is to institutionalize uh, alternative learning system, but not to institutionalize it because we just want to have a bill on alternative learning system but we want to institutionalize and strengthen and correct the, uh, correct the uh, deficiencies of the program. I'm very, very bullish on this program. I, I am very positive uh, on this program because uh, when I was a local chief executive, I've seen for myself the uh, efficacy as well as the life transformation capabilities of this program. However, admittedly, marami talagang deficiencies, no? one of which is the low passing rate of the equivalency test. Uh, Valenzuela, even though highly supportive uh, during my time, the passing rate is only 17%. No? Ang baba, 1-7 no? during, during my time. And we really pumped in a lot of funds for this program. And uh, I was also um, taken aback because... Uh, during the briefing dur uh, in the last hearing, uh, there seems to be a um, lack of focus on the alternative learning system. So if it's a life-changing program, but you're not giving it focus, then we're just wasting not only resources, but the time of the uh, learners. Uh, there are a lot of bright spots. No? When I was listening to Pastor uh, Pitogo, uh, I, 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 I heard from the um, service providers that uh, maraming, mga, um, maraming mga bright spots that we can work on, learn from them. And even uh, the World Bank uh, study, uh, maybe recognize the presence of Center Binay. Uh, nung nabinasa ko yung World Bank study, even they agreed that this is a program that gives second life and second chances to uh, a lot of our um, a lot of our um, uh, constituents, especially the, mi the uh, marginalized uh, sectors. So, asayang itong program, nahinayang ako. No? And uh, I think this is now a, uh, talking about second chances, this bill will give a second chance no, to, the to the alternative learning system. Uh, let's put focus. That's why, frankly speaking, ASEC, I was quite disappointed during the last presentation. Uh, I, I felt that the uh, DepEd was not ready to present uh, facts and figures as well as the direction of the alternative learning system. That's why we deemed it necessary to have another hearing. You know? 
so that the senators, um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Senator Bina is here, who's also very passionate with education, so that we will hear how we can strengthen the program. Ang objective talaga to strengthen eh. No? And uh, another feature that I really want to include is to strengthen the partnership with service providers. No? Dahil nakita ko na, uh, for example, hindi naman dahil nandito si Pastor, but they're very passionate, no? Not because of the monetary consideration, baka wala nga monetary, but because of love for humanity and love for our kababayan. So, we have to trigger that and uh, um, grow, make it grow bigger nationwide. So with that, uh, as a combat, I'm very happy that you are here. <laughs> uh, last time, and dito rin si Senator Joel, and we were quite disappointed with what we, uh, what we saw and what we heard. But uh, this time, hopefully, we can get deeper, richer uh, detail from you. And um, uh, we also want to hear your suggestions on how to improve the bill. Uh, we have circulated a second draft, meaning we included a lot of the things that we learned from the first hearing, but this is only a draft. Uh, this hearing will enrich the second draft again, and uh, hopefully we will come up with a very comprehensive, very uh, strong alternative learning system bill that will prepare the program into a, a really core um, tool for the country to fight poverty. At the end of the day, we're fighting poverty. No? This is a tool to fight poverty. With that, uh, Senator Bina, any, any? So we can proceed. Uh, uh, Asik Ambat will turn over the microphone to you and uh, you can uh, present your uh, plans and programs. No? <coughs> On behalf of the Department of Education, I would like to thank uh, Senator Wynne Gachalian, Chairman of the uh, Senate Committee on Basic Education, of course, uh, the members of this committee for giving us a second chance, like ALS, to present our plans and to present uh, how we want to move forward with this legacy program of the Duterte administration. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Nancy, uh, nagpapa, humihingi po kami ng paumanhin sa hindi namin pagdalo noong unang hearing. Ako po ay pinadala sa Shanghai para po umaten ng UNESCO Institute of Lifelong Learning Workshop. Uh, I was head of Philippine delegation, so sa presentation ko po meron din po akong ilalapit tungkol sa lifelong learning na uh, masusolusyonan po sana ng committee na ito. For the part of uh, Director Almeida, uh, siya po ay nasa Korea naman po dahil lifelong learner po yan at meron din pong course na uh, inatenan. Um, uh, but now, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Nancy, I'm uh, honored to present to you the to update you about what is happening in the ALS program and to present the roadmap and ways forward. So, yes. in the last three years, we can say that we have been reaching more out-of-school youth and adults. Um, noon pong 2016 to 2018, ang enrollment po namin ay umabot ng 2,106,000, 2 million, 2 million 25 and 167. Ang aming pong completers ay 1.3 million. Ang pumasa po ng ANE test ay nasa 390,057. Kumpara po doon sa 2005 to 2015, sinasabi po namin when you talk of enrollment, from 2005 to 2015, year, year on year, nag average lang po noon ang enrollment ng mga 390,000. But in the last three years, sa administrasyon po ni Secretary Liling Briones, ang enrollment ay umaabot na po ng 600,000 per year. At last, on the average, last year po ang pinakamataas namin, umabot po kami sa 840,000. 840,000, and this is because of the advocacy, this is because of uh, yun pong mga partners natin ay dumadami na because they do understand this program is uh, crucial and essential. So, um, doon po sa aming enrollment, papakita po namin sa inyo, we can give you the breakdown 2016, 2017, and 2018. Sinasabi po namin na much as the access to basic education has improved with the investments that we have been giving, 
meron pa rin po tayong mga enrollees doon po sa basic literacy program. Ito po ay ang programa para doon po sa mga hindi pa nakakabasa, nakakasulat at marunong bumilang. So it's at 178,723 in the last three years. At syempre po, meron pa rin po tayong enrollees doon po sa ating elementary level. Nasa 336,745 po ito. At ang pinakamalaki po ay doon sa secondary level na umaabot po ng 1.5 million ang nag-enroll mula po 2016 hanggang 2018. Um, Pinisent po ni Secretary Ling during the budget hearings ang mga kadahilanan kung bakit meron pa rin po tayong out-of-school youth, children. Uh, ito po ay consistent with the findings of the Annual Poverty Indicator Survey. Overall, for ages 6 to 24, yung pong 2017 Annual Poverty Indicator Survey says that we have 3.6 million out-of-school children and youth. Bulk po noon, 83% ay nasa edad 16 to 24, although 11% noon ay nasa edad 12 to 15, at syempre may, mas, may, may mga mas bata po po doon. Ang mga kadahilanan ng kanilang pag-drop out, at kami po ay medyo nababahala sa mga kadahilanan, kasi po noong 2014, there were saying na ang number one cause for them dropping out or not being in school is financial reasons. But by 2017, ang sinasabi po ng mga na survey kung bakit wala po sila sa eskwelahan or sila nag-drop out is because of teenage, uh, early pregnancy and family matters. Family matters can be anything. Maari po nagkahiwalay ang mga magulang, so napabayaan yung bata. Um, ma makikita po natin ito when we go to the ground. Ang pangalawa po, na dahilan, unang dahilan, maraming sumagot na they're not in school because of uh, family matters, early marriage. Pangalawa po, yung pong lack of interest. So tinatanong po namin ngayon, meron ongoing study na kinomission po namin, nagpatulong po kami sa UNICEF. Tinatanong po namin, ano po ba ang lack of interest na dahilan na ito? Bakit po, if education is supposed to be their... Um, way to have a better life, bakit po sila nawawalan ng interest sa edukasyon? Ito po ba ay dahil uh, boring ang mga teachers namin? Or pangit ang mga classroom namin? Or wala ba kaming, don't we have enough learning resources? Or yung curriculum po namin mismo, boring, hindi nakaka-interest. Or it could also be a factor of, uh, take for example, yung pong uh, isa po naming project with BRAC, Tinignan po namin yung community sa Balabak, Palawan. Meron po kaming grade school at high school dun sa community iyon. Pero what we are finding out is that pagka-graduate ng grade school, hindi na po tumutuloy ng high school yung mga bata, even if we have a high school there. Kasi po, kulang po yung industry dun sa lugar. So the kids there, after graduating from grade school, would rather jump on a boat and work in Saba illegally. So, meron pong ganong factors. Uh, of course, no, yung pangatlong dahilan na sinabi nila kaya wala sila sa eskwelahan ay yung lack of financial resources. Parte pa rin po yun, and we are trying to solve it with, uh, yun nga, public education is now free from kindergarten to tertiary. Pati po yung TechVoc, may mga batas po na pinasa at uh, natutuwa po kami na meron pong mga ganon na mga uh, legislation. No? Um, we're trying to solve ito pong lack of um, financial resources by introducing the voucher program, mga ganun po, and uh, introducing the feeding program as well para po ang mga estudyante po natin ay hindi gutom na pumapasok. So, next please. As in numbers, ito po yung uh, naka-breakdown per year in the last three years since 2016, 2017, and 2018. Kung mapapansin niyo po, Mr. Chair, I, we are being very candid when we present this data kasi po, we have to be very honest with the committee kasi po, alam po namin na tayo po ang magtutulungan sa pagsolusyon nitong mga, itong picture na ito, itong scenario na ito. And this really baffles, baffled me when I uh, look at the data, when I look at the figures. Marami po ang nag enroll pero pababa po ang nakakakompleto ang nagte-take ng test at ang pumapasa. Tama po kayo rin sa tanong nyo. Kung ito po ay second chance education program, 
ilang percent ba ang nagkaroon ng second chance para sila po ay makatuloy ng kolehyo, para sila po ay makapagtrabaho, para sila po ay makapag-negosyo uh, or makapag-avail ng higher skills training. Sinasabi po namin at ng World Bank, so findings nila, from enrollment down to the passing, it's down 20, only 20% of those who enrolled pass the test. Pababa po siya ng pababa. And this is the picture that we worked on as we drafted yung mga action plans po namin at yung roadmap. Okay. So, uh, just to tell you, Mr. Mr. Chair and uh, Senator Nancy, when you talk of passing rates, noong 2016 po, um, 42% nang pumasa sa ANE, 42% lamang po nang nag-take sa elementary level ang pumasa. But for secondary level, mas tumataas po yung passing rate. Okay. So next, please. Um, all right. As we studied, yung sitwasyon po na yun, kung bakit nga po, from enrollment to passing, marami pong challenges, may mga nakikita po kami, both demand and supply side. The profile of our learners will be your demand side challenges. Una po, a large portion of potential enrollees are from the ages 15 to 30. The World Bank study is saying na ito po yung productive population natin at sila po yung mag-a-avail, gustong mag-avail ng ALS. Uh, the data of World Bank, which is collaborated with the Labor Force Study in 2017, says that yung 15 to 30 population po natin na pwedeng mag-ALS or mga hindi nakapagtapos ng pag-aaral ay nasa 6.6 .6 million. Majority of our learners who are enrolled are between the ages 15 to 24. Although kung pupunta po kayo sa ground, may makikita po kayo as old as 77 years old, nag-aals. 55% of our enrollees are employed. So, yan pa lang po, nagtatrabaho po sila. So, hindi po talaga sila makakapunta sa learning center araw-araw the way we, the way those in formal school go to school every day. No? And because we have 55% employed, napaka-importante po na sa ALS program, ma-upskill sila, ma sila, they will find ways to improve their competencies. And of course, we, we look at ge the gender um, aspect also. No? Across programs, there are more males than females who enroll. And uh, when you talk of completion rates, mas mataas po ang numero ng nakakakompleto among males. But then, when you talk of the A and E test, the females performed slightly better. Pero po, ito pong sa fact na to, kung titingnan po natin, sinasabi ng Annual Poverty Indicator Survey na mas marami ang babaeng nag-drop out. Pero, bakit mas marami ang naka-enroll sa ALS? So, nasaan po yung ating mga girls? Where are they? Why are they not in the program, even if the program is free? And what can we do to get them into the program? So, uh, mamaya po, mas ma mahabang diskusyon doon. Um, sinasabi rin po nung survey at ng World Bank study, marami po ang nag attend Karamihan sa mga nag attend ng, ng klase, spend an average of 20 hours per week to learn. Ang mga nasa urban areas attend more sessions than in rural areas. Um, this can be explained by the fact na in urban areas, mas maraming community learning centers, so mas pwede silang pumunta ng madalas. Whereas in rural areas, kalat-kalat po at malalayo ang mga locations ng community learning centers. Again, um, taking into consideration na karamihan po sa ating learners ay nagtatrabaho, kahit na po libre ang ALS, wala pong sinisingil, um, nagkakaroon po sila ng, what do you call this, opportunity cost sa pag-attend. Kasi pa, they would have to miss work or kung naman po sila ay mga nanay na full-time, baka po kailangan po nilang kumuha ng yaya or um, they have to pay child care just to attend the ALS classes. So next, please. So some more... Um, facts or demand side challenges about our learners. Sinasabi po ng pag-aaral ng World Bank, those who dropped out 
due to financial reasons, were more likely to enroll in ALS, complete the program, and pass the test. So, hindi po sila mahina ang ulo. Determinado po sila na deprive lang po sila noong nakoconstrain lang po sila because of financial resources, because of poverty. So, next. Ito po yung sinasabi natin na women who dropped out of school due to marriage and pregnancy are far less likely to enroll in ALS. And I would like to tell this committee that that is uh, alarming kasi po baka ito rin po yung dahilan kung bakit meron po tayong mga non-readers na umaabot ng grades ganito kasi po yung mga nanay po nila ay hindi nakapag-aral din. And as we know, studies would show that uh, more educated mothers have healthier and more educated children. So, we have to look into that and introduce interventions as well. Next, please. Yes, ma'am. With the permission of the chair. Siguro, Isaac Ambat, may percentage ba kayo kung ilan yung, kasi diba you cited three reasons. What's the percentage dun sa first reason dahil because of um, early pregnancy? I'll, I'll uh, center, I'll get back to you, Pinapa. Hanap ko lang po. Okay. So, uh, but we'll, we'll go back to that in a bit. About 60% of those who enrolled and passed the ANE went to enroll in tertiary education or vocational training. So, uh, we really, they really see this. Napakalaki pong parte ng kanilang pag-asenso sa buhay, ang kanilang pagpasa sa... Um, sa A and E, uh, Ms. Uh, Senator Bina, Mr. Chair, if I may, yun pong yung sa tanong po ninyo doon po sa percentage, percentage, no, of our out of school children and youth for the ages 15 to 24, 37 percent po ang sinabi nila wala sila sa school because of marriage and family matters. We will give you the the, the numbers itself in a bit. So, Mr. Chair, can you just um, can you just submit to the committee the data? Yes, yes, we'll be we'll be happy to do that. And of course, those who passed the A and E tests were test were twice likely to report being employed as full-wage earners. Next. So yun po, nakita po natin ang demand-side challenges sa mga learners po natin. Ngayon naman po, sa supply-side challenge ng programa. The budget for ALS remained at less than 1% of public education spending. Hindi po katulad sa formal system, ang ating pong... Sa ALS po, hindi po nagbibuild ng classrooms, wala po kaming textbook na binibili except for learning modules, wala din pong equipment na pinoprovide. However, 70% of facilitators reported not having enough learning modules for their learners nor have received copies of LMs. Yung learning modules po ay napaka-importante. The last time na nakatanggap po ng modules ang ating po mga teachers all over the country was in 20... 2013. Um, Nagbabudget po ang departamento para sa pag-print ng learning modules, subalit nababalahaw po siya sa procurement. Yung printing and delivery. Yes, um, yes, Senator. Uh, there's about, I think, 80 million in DBMPS for learning modules supposed to be. Uh, and we're procuring new uh, modules. Pero bakit ho nagkakaroon ng problema sa procurement? Is it because may COA requirement? Or, or, or wala pong nagbibid dahil mababa po yung presyo. Or nagpe-fail po, nagpe-fail, nagpe-fail. Eh, pero di ba pag nag-fail naman, pwede nang negotiated bidding yung, uh, yung ano, procurement? Ah, uh, well, we're working on it, uh, Madam Senator. Or napag-aralan nyo naman, baka mas maigi, kayo na lang ang... Uh, noong, pong, noon pong 2018, sa budget po ng ALS, inintroduce po namin yung tinatawag namin support to operations sa mga regions. So, Parte po nung guidelines na sinabi namin, pwede na kayong mag-photocopy 
nitong mga existing modules para ipamigay po ninyo sa inyong mga learners. Because as we go around, na, na we found out na mga teachers nga po namin, wala pong, marami sa kanilang hindi kumpleto ang set ng kanilang modules. I mean, we have 283 modules. Not all the teachers have a complete set. At napaka-importante po ng modules, especially kung nag aas ka. Kung nakita po ninyo, 55% are working. So they cannot be attending classes every day. So, kailangan po nilang mag-uwi ng learning modules. Para makapag-aral po sila kung self-learner sila eh. Or, or Asik, napag-aralan nyo na ba? Hindi ba pwede ipagawa ito sa National Printing Office, which is another government agency? Ina-explore po yung mga yan, pero parang mas mahal po yata ang cost mas ng... Mas mahal pa pag NPO? Yun po ang experience po namin. Okay. So, uh, next... Bulk of the ALS budget, yun pong, uh, is for transportation allowance and teaching aid. Ito po, makikita po ito sa GAA, ito po yung tinatawag na item, line item na flexible learning options. Sa flexible learning options, tatlo po ang nandodoon, ang ALS, ang ADM, at ang EIE. At bulk po nung for ALS is for transportation allowance and teaching aid of teachers. And noong pong umupo, uh, kami, ni na Secretary Liling, tinaasan po namin yung transportation allowance from 2,000 to 3,200 per month. But we're not, uh, yung pong World Bank study sinasabi po nila sa pag-survey po nila sa mga teachers, hindi po sapat yung 3,200 per month. At ang, at ang proseso po namin dito ay towards the end of the year po nila natatanggap. Abono po muna. Yung pong teaching aid ay napaka-importante. 500 pesos po yan kada buwan. Kasi po, uh, World Bank Study again will say na sa kakulangan at wala po tayong module, so yung mga teachers po natin ay nagpo-photocopy ng mga learning resources using the teaching aid allowance. And uh, siguro I would like to flag this committee also that for 2019, hindi pa po meron pong inaayos when you talk of Kasi po sinabi po yung sa 2019 GAA na we have to make sure na hindi double compensation yung transportation allowance at cash allowance sa transportation ay sa special hardship at sa cash allowance. So, yun po yung inaayos po namin with DBM ngayon. So, anyway, next. As mentioned, uh, wala pong... Wala nga pong, hindi po nagbibuild ng community learning centers ang DepEd. So, ALS facilities differ sharply between urban and rural areas. Uh, marami po kayo makikita, tinatawag nilang type 1, yun po mga barangay multipurpose halls, waiting shed, under the trees. Pero sa mga pag-aaral po, sinasabi na malaki po ang epekto rin na may maayos na structure for our learners to come, for them to learn also. May conduciveness to uh, ng learning environment ang kailangan para hindi po nagsasuffer ang program quality. So next please. Very romantic po kasi yung under the trees. They can learn. But with the new curriculum now, medyo challenging na po yan. Ayan, yan yung, yung picture po na yan, under the tree yan. So, um, next, yung governance structure din po ay nakaka-complicate ng program oversight. Since wala po kaming principal na nagmo-monitor sa mga teachers namin, it's difficult also uh, to determine kung yung mga mobile teachers nga po namin ay nagtuturo araw-araw. Pumupunta po ba sila sa community learning center? At kung nagtuturo sila at pumapasok, Ang turo ba nila ay talagang consistent with the curriculum or ang turo nila ay kung paano pumasa sa exam. So mga reviewers para sa ANE test ang ginagamit. So next. Uh, engagement of partners who deliver program ALS programs is not as robust given policy gaps. So uh, there should be updated guidelines specifying minimum requirement for hiring and training of facilitators time spent on ALS sessions, core educational contents, monitoring and reporting. Noon po, meron po kaming contracting scheme. So meron po kaming mga uh, binabayaran na NGOs to deliver ALS. But in 2016, it was suspended and it's under review. Okay. 
Pero meron po kaming halimbawa, partnerships with existing public schools. Ito po yung tinatawag namin balik paaralan para sa out-of-school adults. Kinocontract po namin yan. Yun pong ALS EST namin, we uh, work with our existing STVEP schools para mag-deliver sila ng livelihood and ALS as well. So next. Okay. Given the profile of ALS teachers, continuous capacity building and development of their career path, are imperative for them to remain highly motivated to deliver quality ALS programs. Karamihan po sa ating mga mobile teachers ay generalists. Wala pong uh, nag-major sa English, wala pong nag-specialization sa English, sa math, sa science, even TLE. So yun po yung challenge na isa pa. Next. So mga tanong po namin sa programa ay ito. Ang utos po ni Presidente sa kanyang mga SONA speeches and when we assumed office is that we should expand and intensify the implementation of ALS. So how do we expand and intensify the implementation? How do we reform and develop the program so that it is valued and supported inside and outside of DepEd? Uh, one of the things that we're finding out is that the program in some, for some, is treated like an underperforming half-sibling of formal school. So next, what will success in ALS look like? Kasi po, kung nakita po ninyo yung numero na pinresent ko kanina when you talk of completers, when you talk of passing rates, doon lang po kami measure. Ang performance-based bonus sa ALS ay nakapako lamang po doon sa completers at doon sa pagpasa. Kaya po, may mga taon na wala pong PBB ang ALS. So next, um, what are the indicators to measure success for ALS program e expansion? So ito po yung mga inaayos, inaayos namin at patuloy po namin inaayos and with the help of the committee, we hope that we can uh, come up with a program expansion po talaga. Next. So what had been done so far, na-introduce po namin itong tinatawag namin na ALS 2.0. Uh, ito po yung invigorated, reformed, at uh, as what Senator Wynne said kanina na robust implementation of a program for out-of-school youth and adults. So next, na-introduce po yung K-12 uh, aligned curriculum for us. We do, rec we do realize na um, hindi po natin pwedeng iwanan, hindi po pwedeng magstay the same ang curriculum for ALS. Napakaraming challenges po brought by Fourth Industrial Revolution. So our learners need yung tinatawag po nating information and literacy skills, communication skills, life, uh, life and career skills. Yung mga yun po na parte po ng K-12 program. So next. Inintroduce din po namin yung tinatawag nating ALS Education and Skills Training. Ito po yung pag-introduce po natin, paggamit po natin sa ating mga e existing tech book schools para po i-complement yung literacy with skills. And so far, in the last year, 10,000 po na estudyante ang naka-enroll dito sa EST at sila po ay pagkatapos po ng kanilang uh, pag-attend ng session, sila po ay nagkakaroon ng NC2. So this is a systematic part of upskilling, partnering literacy with skills. So next. Um, because of the new curriculum, we have a new functional literacy test that we develop. Kasi po, isa rin po sa mga challenge kung bakit, isa rin po siguro sa mga dahilan kung bakit pababa ang passing rate ay yung pagpasok pa lang po kasi ng estudyante, mali na yung pag pagkaka-assess sa kanila. Baka po, elementary level lang po talaga sila, pero nilalagay sila sa secondary. So, yon Next. Meron na rin po tayong mga enabling policies, kaya po nakreate ang task force, uh, nakreate po yung implementing guidelines for uh, the curriculum, at syempre na appoint po ako na maging full-time sa ALS. So, next. Meron na pong manual of operations para po ma to ensure that uh, we get to implement the program better. So next. Um, we came up with a five-year strategic roadmap, which I will present in a bit. Meron mo rin pong new training program for us implementers. So far, we have rolled out this mass training of teachers for all 
our mobile teachers, and for some regions, meron pong mga partners na tinitrain na rin po for the new curriculum at para po sa mga bagong uh, policia for us. So next. Life skills modules integrated. We adopted... Um, USAID introduced yung pong tinatawag na life skills modules. Life skills for work readiness and civic engagement. So, nine modules po ito. Sinisimulan po namin ang programa ngayon for ALS. Bago po sila turuang magbasa, magbilang, sumulat, um, we teach them life skills like setting goals for themselves. Ano ba ang gusto mong gawin sa buhay mo? Where, 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 you, where are you at right now? What do you want to do? So, we guide them. So, we have the life skills modules, which I can show in a bit kung meron pa po kayong, kung itatanong po ninyo. So, next. Ah. Uh, well, well, so ito po yung new curriculum. Uh, as I was saying kanina, we want 21st century skills even for our out-of-school youth and adults. We want them to learn information, media, and technology skills, learning and innovation skills, communication skills, life and career skills. Uh, ang description po nito ay... It's substantially aligned with the K-10 to curriculum, but not really a mirror. Pero more academic-focused competencies. It has more academic-focused competencies compared to the old curriculum. Okay. Back then. Additional competencies in the new curriculum would be um, in response to recent global development, so anjan po, tinuturo na po ngayon ng ASEAN regional integration, global citizenship, digital citizenship. So, next. Yun pong roadmap, pinattern po namin ito doon po sa strategic directions ng DepEd. So, overall, sinasabi po namin, by 2022, we will have a nation-loving and competent lifelong learners able to respond to challenges and opportunities through quality, accessible, relevant, and liberating K-12 program delivered by a modern, professional, proactive, nimble, trusted, and nurturing DepEd. So next. So, inangkor po namin yung roadmap for us dito sa mga strategic goals, uh, objectives, nito pong uh, overall DepEd vision. So when we talk of expanding access to basic education, we want to improve, we intend to improve uh, as literacy mapping. Ngayon po ang nangyayari, uh, uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Nancy, yung po mga mobile teachers namin, magtuturo po sila ng sampung buwan in a year, tapos two months nun, maghahanap sila ng estudyante, magmamap sila. But we found out that that's inefficient. Kasi nga, uh, yung iba pwede silang Pag naka-75 na silang learners na nakalista, titigil na sila. So what's more efficient is we partner with DSWD kasi po sila po yung may tinatawag na, of course, four-piece program and they have listahanan. And the listahanan says there kung ano po yung mga barangay na mababa ang literacy. So we can just, our mobile teachers can just go to those areas para mas targeted at saka marireach talaga yung dapat marireach given the um, limited number of our mobile teachers. We also want to intensify inclusion dimension of ALS. Parte po ito na magiging training ng ating mga teachers kasi po napaka-diverse na mga learners nila. So they have to learn how to handle the diverse kinds of learners. Kasi po sa bill po na ito, uh, sa bill po na pinopropose, very diverse talaga. I mean, cultural minorities, um, IPs, kailangan pong uh, maayos ang pag-handle sa kanila. So, uh, we also want, of course, not to expand access to secondary education. We are very candid in saying na yun pong transition rate sa secondary ay hindi po ganun ka. Even in formal school, may mga nagda-drop out talaga. So, uh, to do that, we want to increase number of ALS teachers. Last year, we have 2,000 mobile teacher items uh, additional deployed to the divisions. Um, hindi po ito ganun kasapat. Kasi po nung 2017, ang resulta po ng mapping exercise, sinasabi po na meron pong 1.2 million potential learners na na-map. Pero po, 2,000 lang ang naidagdag na mobile teachers last year. So, ang yield ay yun pong 840,000. 
Siguro ASEC, anong region yung may pinaka mababang literacy rate? Or may dito? De definitely. <laughs> uh, ang mababa pong literacy, BARM. BARM, BARM. Uh, we are, kaya po may special focus din po tayo dapat. And outside of BARM. Outside Ay, of... For example, may data ba kayo for um, Luzon, ano doon, so for Visayas and for Mindanao? Meron po. Meron, eh, result, resulta po ng uh, mapping po ng mga mobile teachers namin. Ha? Pero hindi po yung official, because the official will come from DSWD, care of listahan. And kasi po sila po yung merong, I think they have about 20,000 or 30,000 enumerators all over the country. So mas solid po yung kanila. Ma-identify po nila yung mga barangays din. Makuha yung ganong data. Opo, Pero kasama. kayo, hindi niyo pa... Kailangan pa po namin umupo with DSWD to target po. Pero sila po yung nasa official, Pero official po yung listahanan. Pero na ata sila next uh, round ng listahanan eh. Yes, that, yes, yes, Senator. So, um, of course, we want to improve yung pong pagpasa ng mga studyante natin sa accreditation and equivalency. Parte po nun yung uh, online delivery of ALS. For the information of this committee, sa basic education po, wala pa po tayong online delivery, kahit po sa formal. And uh, given na marami po tayong challenges ngayon when it comes to pagpasok ng mga bata, uh, madalas po, bawa in recent months, nagsususpend po tayo, nagsususpend ng klase. So we should have a way to teach them, and maybe online will be a way, another way, no? to deliver basic education. Although may mga challenges lang dito, take for example, yung integrity, yung pag, um, making sure kung ano ba yung right mix of teaching, may tinatawag sila na blended uh, delivery. Anyway, uh, we want to develop community learning center guidelines as well. Uh, sinasabi po namin na kailangan po for the new curriculum ng community learning center na maayos na meron pong equipment na makakapag-aral mabuti para po maitaas ang passing rate ng ating mga learners. So next. Uh, ayun, definitely we want to engage more non-DEP ed as providers. Kausap ko po si Pastor Pitogo kanina and we are saying, uh, we, can we work together? Ano po ba yung model? How can we help you so that we can deliver uh, ALS as well? Tapos, of course, no, uh, party po nun. Pag naging partner po namin sila, gusto rin po namin silang matrain. No? Para consistent po ang implementation, consistent po ang quality. So next. Um, of course, strategic goal number two, we want to improve quality and relevance. And then po yung full implementation of the K-12 program. We want to promote team teaching, especially in sed secondary level. Nasabi ko po, uh, Mr. Chair, na generalist po ang mga teachers namin. So for secondary level, they have to be team teaching with those in formal school, especially when you talk of math, especially when you talk of science and English. Um, definitely, parte po nung tinatawag namin uh, pivot from access to quality ang pag-improve ng ating mga teachers, ng quality ng mga teachers natin. Um, kaya po, mag introduce kami ng progr training programs and deepening training programs for them. Uh, we want to maximize the use of technology for learning. Meron po kaming tinatawag na, may portal po kami for our learning resources, but it has to be updated. And it's, we have to make sure na hindi po siya nag-offline. Yun po ang problema namin na, one, one of the challenges po, when you talk of technology, no? Tapos, we want to provide, of course, science, math, and tech book equipment to our CLCs. Uh, we want to improve learners' academic performance, uh, provide training on TechVoc, uh, introduce an al specific post-program support system. Wala pong guidance counselor sa ALS. But we want to introduce, we want to be able to guide our learners as well. Uh, in other countries, what they have is, sa mga portals po nila, nakalagay po doon, may career guidance. Take for example, South Africa, they have that model na eh. uh, Nakalagay po doon, careers that uh, students can access and universities and courses that they can go to. So next. Konti na lang po. Uh, we want to strengthen database related to ALS. Yung pong, uh, I, I do understand the concern of the senator when, she, when he said na na-frustrate siya dahil kulang na kulang yung data. Kami rin po, 
ngayon, when we look at the data for ALS, kulang, we, we, we don't really know kung ano po ba itong mga learners natin ito. Kulang po yung fields na nilalagay namin and we want to improve on that. Halimbawa, uh, kung ang learner namin ay nag-take na nitong mga modules na to, gusto namin makita kung ano yung mga tinake niyang modules because if we're leading to micro-certification, may tinatawag po kami micro-certification, gusto namin malaman ano na ba natutunan niya so that even if he doesn't take the high-stakes ANE test, pwede namin i-certify na um, may natutunan siya at may napala siya sa ALS. So um, we want to improve monitoring and evaluation of processes and we intend to set up the framework already. Um, of course, uh, when you talk of learning modules, we want better internal planning to improve the procurement timelines. We need researches for ALS. Uh, kaya po nung pag -upo po namin, we readily coordinated with our partners and Baba World Bank to come up with the studies, to come up with the surveys because they have that, that capability. Um, of course, feasibility studies so that we can uh, further improve. Yung pong isa po ninyong hinihingi po sa amin, yung conduct tracer studies on ALS learners. Wala po ito ngayon. Pero ito pong isa pong sinasuggest namin kasi po it's a bit tedious kung uh, it, it would need funding. Pero one of our suggestions is that kung po pwede ba na yung ating mga, kasi po yung mga, even in ALS, they have the learner reference number. Okay, so they probably can take that when they go to university. Kumbaga, ia-align po ng system ng CHED at ng TESDA so that, at DepEd so that we can track our learners better through the learner reference number. They can use it whether they enroll in higher ed or in TESDA para po mas, mas efficient at hindi po masyadong magastos. Kasi po ngayon, after the first hearing, uh, Pinatanong na po namin sa mga regional focal namin, nasan may mga learners ninyo? And we can submit the data in a while. Um, of course, we want to develop as 2.0 governance structure. Uh, as you may know, task force lang po ngayon ito. The biggest shock when we assumed office in 2016, bago pa po uh, nag-oath si Secretary, sinasabi na po niya, we will focus on ALS. Pagpasok po namin sa DepEd, Wala walang BALS. Wala pong bals, pero in-appoint, nag-appoint ng assistant secretary. So, anyway. <laughs> and then, um, of course, we may do with the, the rationalized structure, but after three years of working with the rationalized structure, we really said that, you know, this, this, will, not, this will not work. We need a focused governance structure for ALS. If we are intent on delivering on, on our promises, so, you know, ensuring inclusive, quality, learning, and even lifelong learning. Um, of course, yung ating framework for coordination with Stakeholder Alliance, uh, for our teachers no, to improve human resource and development, uh, comprehensive and fair performance system, lobby for specialized degree on ALS teaching. Uh, sa CHED po ngayon, meron na pong Develop, hindi ko po alam kung anong stage na yun pong diploma for us so that our teachers will also know the nuance of teaching out of school youth and adults. They will know adult education, um, non formal education, lalo. So, next. So, the roadmap overall in the next two years, we plan to fix the current uh, problems na sinasabi natin. And 20, 2021 to 2022, ito po yung mga mag-ipapilot ang mga innovations. And of course, no, uh, towards the end, uh, beyond 2022, yung pong mga innovations, we want them uh, institutionalized. Uh, Mr. Senator, Mr. Chair, kami po sa administration, we will be, we have about two, technically two and a half years left. But the work ahead is so big. That is why we need the support of this committee in institutionalizing not just the governance structure, but yun pong suporta para sa ALS. So next. Uh, we define ALS 2. Point, yung pinisend ko po na ALS 2.0. So 
Um, ito po yung gusto nating makita na programa para po sa ating out-of-school youth and adults that even if it's non-formal, we are able to offer high-quality academic education. Uh, we see ALS as a program able to properly recognize prior learning and provide genuine modular courses leading to micro-level certifications that are useful for the labor market. We want to be able to provide skills and livelihood training through partnerships with local industries and experts. Uh, we want a better career path for our teachers. And of course, no, in the end, we want to see the out-of-school youth uh, and adult education program respected within the Department of Education and provided with adequate resources and support to be able to meet its targets properly. So next. Mr. Senator, uh, i-introduce ko lang po sa inyo itong uh, learning pathways po natin. We, this is what we uh, came up with when we were in the workshop of uh, UNESCO Institute of Lifelong Learning. Tinignan po namin yung pathways po. This is within the education sector. Kung saan po, sinasabi po natin sa bill po ninyo na, you know, formal, non-formal, informal, we should be able to introduce ways to validate, recognize, and accredit learning in formal and non-formal, and informal as well. Currently, uh, Mr. Senator, meron lang gap sa alternative learning system because we don't have yet senior high school, but we will introduce it by next year. Our learners, after passing junior high school, can actually go to TechVoc, okay? But, uh, and they can actually go to tertiary, pursue a bachelor's degree through the, later, through, the later, through the ladderized program. But I think this one is facing challenge because there are SUCs who are saying that they will not, um, they want to be exempted or hindi na nila, yeah, the, the, hindi nila i-credit yung natutunan in TechVoc ng two years if they want to go to university. So, meron pong mga ganon na pag-uusap that the committee uh, and can, can look into para po ma-ensure po natin na we give, um, yun nga, we give pathways, we introduce pathways, make sure na yung mga learners po natin ay may pupuntahan, whether it's formal, uh, non-formal. So next, next, next. Ayan, sinasabi po natin, second chance education does not have to be second class. And with the help of this committee, with, uh, with your proposed legislation, Mr. Senator, Mr. Chair, uh, we hope na maiangat po natin ang kalidad ng ALS. So, yun lang po. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you. We uh, recognize the presence of uh, Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa. Uh, can we go back to the slides kanina? May, may nakita ko dun sa... Go, let's go back to the slides. No. Balik pa, balik. One more. One more. De, one, de, front, front, front. Front. Yan. Go, go. May nabasa ko. Yan, last pa. Dun sa last, a program respected within Department of <coughs> Education. So I guess hindi rin nirespeto itong programa sa um, Department of Education. Ito po ang uh, ini-introduce po namin. Where we're, we're breaking mindsets as well. Kasi po yung mga previous arrangements, medyo hiniwalay po ang ALS sa DepEd. Kung baga... When we were going around and we were orienting key officials, regional directors, ARDs, superintendents, ngayon pa lang po sila nanini, nani, naliliwanagan about us. Halimbawa, tanongin po ninyo sila, uh, ano po, superintendent, mataas po ang enrollment ninyo sa ALS. Should you be happy about it? Hindi nila alam ang sagot nila. Sabi nila, uh, because they feel it's a failure of the formal system. But then again, what we're saying now is that if they are enrolled in us and you are able to catch them, then that's okay. Because dalawa po ang, 
at two prong po eh may parallel parallel uh, systems po yan so dapat nagwo-work din po your what matters is you're able to catch them as well but of course no matindi rin po dapat ang gawin niyang interventions sa formal school so uh, yung po mga ganong mga bagay halimbawa opening of classes when i go around during opening of classes i would always say to the principals um ilan po sa mga estudyante niyo dati ang bumalik and they would say, they would give it the number, mga 93%. Nasaan po yung 7%? And medyo magpapanik po sila pag ganon. And what we're saying now is that, Madam Principal, hindi lang po kayo in charge dapat doon sa within the four corners of your school. You should be in charge also of your community. You should know where they are. Or if they're not coming back, you should be able to track them and to refer them to programs. Halimbawa, non-formal ALS. Dapat alam po ni principal kung nasan ang ALS, sino nag, uh, kung sino ang nag-provide nito, whether it's a DepEd, whether it's a partner. So yun po yung aming mga pinagkaabalahan in the last six months. Ino-orient po namin. Hindi pa po kami tapos within DepEd na i-orient at kumbinsihin sila na Sama-sama po tayo dito sa programa for out-of-school youth and adults kasi hindi po kaya ng task force, hindi po kaya ng ako lang. Yun. De definitely the objective of the bill is to not to institutionalize for, the, for institutionalization itself, but really to strengthen, plug the gaps, and uh, make sure that we see the desired outcomes. No? Yun talaga objective nitong bill. And uh, since Senator Bato is here, actually, meron akong isang, one of the reasons why I'm quite uh, passionate about ALS is because, for example, yung mga, our government now is intensifying its uh, convincing power to reduce insurgency. And I would assume, General Bato, Senator Bato, itong mga insurgents, hindi nakatapos to. So, pinapabalik mo sila sa sistema, but what can we offer them? No? So, and then second, uh, natanong nga ni Senator Nancy, yung mga drug dealers, drug pushers, lalo na yung malilit na drug pushers, uh, I know for a fact, karamihan nito, walang pinag-aralan, hindi nakatapos. But we want them to reform. No? We cannot expect a drug pusher, 22 years old, mag grade 1. No? That's, that's not possible. No? So, we have to have a program uh, that uh, will enable them to uh, to mainstream into the society uh, without any discrimination. And this is really the program that we're talking about. No? So, Senator Batam, maybe you can share with us your experiences. Well, doon sa amin naman, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Naobserbahan ko uh, malakas yung al sa amin sa Region 11. Uh, malakas, uh, even may pamangkin na late na pumunta sa akin at binata na, ipinapasok ko doon sa ALS at uh, he's doing good. Maganda, uh, hindi mo masabi na second class uh, education yung ALS dahil nakikita ko yung development sa aking pamangkin. Maganda, maganda yung, uh, oh, baka, basically, matalino lang siya dahil pamangkin ko siya. <laughs> Pero, <laughs> nakikita ko maganda, maganda yung development niya. I'm proud of him, yung, uh, yung ALS natin. Uh, malakas yung ALS sa amin. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, we are present in all, almost in all, uh, drug rehab centers, simula po noong uh, nag po tayo sa position, uh, we made sure na available po ang al sa mga rehab centers, uh, juvenile detention centers, sa ating pong mga, uh, even in Bureau of Corrections, of course, buhay na bahal, bahay po ang ALS. Although ang pakiusap po sa akin na kung pwede daw po yung nasa maximum ay makatuloy din po sila ng kolehiyo, Kasi ang college which is being catered by University of Perpetual, system yata. In, in, uh, no, this is in uh, mid, sa medium lang. So, yung mga sa maximum sinasabi nila, eh, gusto rin naming magkolehyo, baka pwedeng ganun. Uh, we are, uh, we are present in, even in, in areas na may insurgency. Ma, ma, 
taas po ang engagement namin doon. Although I would have to say, Mr. Chair, it's one thing that we teach them. We give them education. But for the drug users, yun pong mga drug reformers, kailangan ang, magig, ang crucial po doon ay may support system sila pagkatapos. Halimbawa, nag-al sila sa loob ng drug rehab, meron po dapat sasalo sa kanila pag nakalabas sila. I've seen this several times, uh, Mr. Chair. Halimbawa, I was in Basilan, umaten po ako ng graduation ng mga nasa ALS doon, uh, BJMP. Pero po pagkatapos, okay sila, they got their diploma, happy. Pero dahil wala pong support system, either hindi po sila kasama ng pamilya nila or yung community ay dinescriminate na sila, pagbalik po niya sa Zamboanga, wala po siyang choice. Nag-drug dealing ulit. So, kulong po uli siya. So, importante po yung post-support program natin. When you talk of um, sa, sa, sa Davao, sa Davao, overall sa Davao region, doon po ako tinuruan ng ALS dahil po mag, malakas po ang programa natin doon. At of course, supported po ni Presidente ang ALS doon, especially in Davao City. Um, yun pong areas like Talaingod in Davao del Norte, kung saan po yung founder po ng Salugpongan Schools, pinuntahan po namin yung community niya. Uh, we, because si Secretary Liling kasama ko po doon, nag-open po ng, nag-inaugurate po ng school building at karamihan, lahat po ng adults doon ay hindi po nakapag-aral ng basic ed. So, uh, meron po kaming dineploy doon na apat po na mobile teachers at napakarami po nilang estudyante. And they're happy na makaka, they were speaking in Bisaya but, um, makakabilang na daw sila, makakasagot na daw po sila ng forms, especially when you talk of yung benefits ng ating pong mga surrenders. It's the same way when we did yun pong first round of decommissioning ng mga MILF combatants, in-offer po sila, ano po ba yung, um, meron po kasing government packages ang binigay. Oh, do you want to study? Do you want skills? Do you want goats for your farms? So yung pong mga, uh, nag-avail ng education. So, basic literacy po yan. Tinuruan po silang magsulat, magbasa, magbilang. So, they were able to fill up the forms. Yung pong una pa lang yan, nakakaiyak na makita sila. And they're very happy about it. Some of them pursued college. Yung pong medyo mga bata, yung mga 30 years old na mga decommissioned combatants pursued college. And that's what we have now in BARM in cooperation with OPAP. We are helping yung pong mga decommissioned combatants because we do understand that we have to equip them so that they can benefit then from the promises of the new region. Thank you. Uh, may, meron ba kayong projection na there will come a time hindi na natin kailangan yung ALS dahil nga the education uh, system, the economic uh, environment ng ating bansa ay wala yung okay okay na hindi na kailangan alas may project, projected time kayo ah uh, mr chair ngayon po we are just trying to catch up sinasabi po ng mga study no uh, for yung 15 to 30 years old na nag-drop out ay 6.6 .6 million okay we are only able to cater in from 2016 to 2018 nasa 1.5 million pa lang so, marami po tayong i-catch up. E, paano naman po yung beyond 30? When you talk of beyond 30, we have 24 million. So, kahit in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, kahit wala pong mag-drop out sa formal school, yung pag-catch up pa lang po natin dun sa mga adults na tinatawag. May bill po kayo on it na deliberate ng Committee on Labor uh, nung Monday. So, Doon pa lang po, hindi po matatanggal ang ALS. And when you talk of lifelong learning, uh, kailangan na kailangan po natin to upskill, reskill, retool. Even, uh, lalo na, for, for the adults, when you talk of continuing education, adult education, all in the purview of lifelong learning. Siguro, Asik, um, kasi doon sa ALS, parang ang daming ano eh, subgroups, di ba? There's this Kunyari, there's a set of students na pwedeng drop out siya ng grade 1, pero yung age niya is pang grade 1. Tapos meron din namang drop, meron din naman, kunyari, ito 30-year-old na ang kaya lang niya is pang grade 1. Pag nagko-conduct ba kayo ng classes for us, sama-sama silang lahat? Um, Mr. Chair, can I uh, ask Director Almeida to help me? Uh, 
uh, Mr. Chair, Senators. Uh, actually, po, uh, when classes in ALS are conducted, it will depend upon the, the listing or the mapping. So one mobile teacher has to have a minimum of 75 learners in one class. But that does not mean that that mobile teacher will be handling it all throughout. So there are uh, multi-levels, multi-grade, and multi-age in that 75 learners enlisted within the community of that one particular mobile teacher. So before any intervention Pero, um, can happen, yes, po. At a given time, si isang teacher pwede magkaroon ng 75 students. Yes, po, and more. Or more. Yes, po. So, saan sila nag, nag -co conduct ng lessons for That's the CLCs. Uh, we mentioned the community learning centers, and we have four types of that. So, a mobile teacher can actually go around the community with different CLCs or centers. So, for example, in one barangay, uh, mayroong bakanteng barangay hall doon. Sa 75 co o covered court, minsan sa market sites, or under the trees. So, ang isang mobile teacher actually ay nagahandle ng maraming klase within the week. That is why uh, traditionally uh, a class can actually meet at most three times a week with two to three hour session. So, the mobile teacher does not actually have vacant days. So, the mobile teacher goes around for Monday. Wednesday, Friday, one class. Pag Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, other areas, and so on and so forth. And yung teacher ba, will they have a higher salary grade compared to a teacher? Uh, sa isang the pala? regular teacher salary is just the same with a mobile teacher one salary. However, as mentioned, we have transpo allowance for our mobile teachers, which the regular teachers in the formal do not have. So, you, you mean to say, Director, hindi pala lahat ng ALS classes ay ginaganap sa isang fixed na regular na classroom? Ah. No po. Sa That's why they are called mobile. Mo mo mobile. Akala ko ang teacher lang mobile, pero ang classroom naka-fix. No po, kasi there are established learning centers in other communities which the mobile teacher can go to. Because we need to reach the learners. We cannot always uh, demand from the learners that they come to a fixed school because of the profile. Pero nakita so, ko sa Dabao, may, may classrooms so, Yes, sir. Malapit sa People's Park yung kanila. Yes, po. They have building. one center. Oh. They have. So, unlike other areas, walang ganun ang ibang Opo. areas? So, in Dabao, really, ALS is strongly implemented. That's why we allow our uh, officials to benchmark, to take a look at how Dabao does ALS including our PDLs, because in Davao City, we have a college for, a college, yes. So those who avail of ALS elementary, secondary in the BJMP, they can proceed to college, because in Davao City, there is a college for PDLs. Pastor, are you, uh, do you have anything to say? ALS in our uh, areas, uh, Senator Bato, especially in Bukidnon, we see ALS as a very relevant tool because especially in the indigenous people, using the classroom under the, the tree is really an organic thing. You see, we, we Sulads, we would like to respect and you know, preserve the culture. So doing classrooms, classroom work outside under the, the tree is you know, a very organic thing. And you know, nakikita po namin, uh, mas maganda at natututo yung mga kabataan. 
Nakikita namin na sa bundok po ay walang te telebisyon, walang internet. Madali tur turuan ang mga kabataan. Sa Kaya nga po nung unang hearing, nas nasabi ko po dito, we have the uh, a very satisfactory result of our learners. We have the 90% passing rate of ALS in Mindanao because uh, General Bato, Sulaj is all over Mindanao. We have 50 literacy centers and I have 150 volunteers uh, who graduated from Mountain View College from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you. Pinag pinagbayabang mo lang, Pastor, yung uh, environment nyo sa bukid nun na maganda yung kahoy nyo, green masyado, <laughs> kaya very conducive to learning. Pero problema dito sa mga siyudad. Yes, yes. Diba? Well, wala silang building, wala rin kahoy, wala, mahirapan so, tayo see, dito. That explains, you know, the mobile teachers. And they are really uh, swak sila, especially para sa amin, masasabi po namin, talagang uh, tumama may dating talaga, especially to the indigenous people. Uh, because I am particularly working in the indigenous people. Uh, pero, as a kampat, di ba sa DepEd, may special, may office then for ITs na may iba ding module wherein they incorporate yung um, what is inherent to the, com to the IT. Uh, we have the uh, IPSEO, uh, the, the office which is actually uh, under the office of the under secretary for curriculum and instruction with USEC Dad San Antonio. They really have a contextualized curriculum on IT. That is not that is not considered as part of ALS. Uh, we also make use of the curriculum if the mobile teacher is handling learners uh, na mga IT. Because uh, as it is, we have conducted classes all over the country that has also IP learners. And paano naman ho yung mga bata na may special needs? Uh, part, part for part ALS? Ng ALS? Yes po, but we are limited to only the visually impaired. That's the, the offering that ALS can give in the meantime because not all teachers in ALS are trained for special or for exceptionalities. So, uh, what we have is ALS uh, for visually impaired because at least uh, we can make use of the brailler. So, the mobile teacher who is not that much trained in visual impairment can ac actually just guide them as to the use of the, the braille. But for other exceptionalities, uh, we have not explored that, but uh, considering the needs of the times, we know that we have to also uh, train our mobile teachers or engage special ed teachers to form part of ALS program so that we can attend to the needs of our learners. So, so wala pa kayo for hearing, like yung may skill na marunong mag sign language? And it's, it's part of the plan, uh, Senator. Pero kailangan po kasi na specialized training. And uh, even in formal, sa formal school po, limitado rin po kami. But we, of course, no, intend to expand it in ALS as well. Kasi po, halimbawa, we're saying that in formal school, yung mga SPED centers po namin ay limitado rin. Kung merong 48,000 schools, ang SPED centers lamang po namin ay nasa 700 po ata. I, I, I think it's, it's within, within that number na makakapag-cater for the different uh, needs of our learners, yung multiple intellectual disability, marami, marami po yan. And uh, ang vision po namin talaga is our schools will be one-stop shop. Kung baga po kung ano yung learning needs and learning uh, conditions po ng ating mga studyante, mga cater natin sila. Halimbawa, uh, of course, no, we have formal school yung gusto po talaga na mag-aral in, in the way that we were taught. No? Uh, meron din sana doon na SPED kasi po kami Mes Mesped Center, uh, na meron din po saan ng community learning center kung pwede po within the school. Para halimbawa, kasi madalas po kaming tanongin, saan ba ako pwedeng mag-ALS? Ang iniisip na lagi school. But of course, not all schools have a classroom for ALS, community learning center. So, uh, kulang na kulang po yan. Uh, gusto rin po natin, halimbawa yung mga Muslim learners po natin, makapag-alive po sila sa lahat ng skwelahan. 
para mag-guide po natin sila at mababantayan din po natin sila I ensure na parang yung Arabic language and Islamic values education is uh, kung ano po yung pinescribe ng Department of Education. Uh, ito po yung mga project po ng Department of Education but that's, we see the need and we hope that no, in the coming years as we are supported, as we are given uh, budget and uh, supported with policies, magagawa po natin ito. I have some basic question, Asek, no? just to go back to some to lay the premise. Uh, itong ALS, ang target niya ay yung mga taong hindi nakapagtapos ng basic education. Yes. Those who haven't, who uh, did not graduate or get a diploma in high school, in secondary, correct? Uh, 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 sir, elementary and secondary. Those elementary. who have dropped out. Those who have dropped out, or th those who didn't finish, yeah. or yes, who didn't yes, go yes, to yes, school yes. at all, no? Who didn't did or no read, no write, no count. Okay. Kasi kaya po meron po kaming basic literacy program. Okay. Ilan yun, yung mga hindi nagtapos ng high school? Lahat-lahat. How many are those? Yung sa enrollment po namin in the last three years, nasa 1.5 million po ang na-capture namin. But lahat-lahat? Uh, yeah, I mean, to the total population? How many of our population did not finish oh, high school? Uh, the, the World Bank study is saying it's 24 million. So 24 million ang universe Did not natin. finish basic education. So meaning the, uh, the clientele ano of ALS is 24, 24 million. million in a perfect world, correct? Yes. All right. Yes, Mr. Chair. Of which we only have about 1.6. 1. 1. Ang ilan nag-enroll? Lahat. Na, One, na, nasa 1.5 million po kami in the last uh, three years. But for 2019, ang enrollment na po namin ay nasa 683,928. Uh, 683,928. This is uh, for 2019. 2019. Out of the 24 million who did not graduate high school, uh, tumataas ba ito in the last three years? Bumababa? I just want to know. F since uh, 2000, let's say 2016, bumababa ito ng 24 million o tumaas in 24 million? We will have, have to get back can, to you on you that one. We're, that not, we're, not, we're not that sure. Pero po, uh, kung, kung titingnan po natin ang trends, no? we were improving when you talk of access, when you talk of transition rates from junior high school to senior high school, pero hindi po laging 100%. So we're assuming na meron talagang, uh, the, the secretary, secretary Link calls it, those who fall through the cracks. At ayun nga po, yung tatlong dahilan ng kanila mga pagda-drop out. And until we really address those reasons, we have a nuanced, sabi niya, nuanced approach in solving or at least introducing interventions to the reasons for not being in school, for dropping out. We will see na madadagdagan, pero hindi naman po siguro ganun karami. So, I just want to know, no? just give us, uh, furnish us a copy. In the last, sige, gawin na lang natin, last five years, kung tumataas o bumababa ang bilang ng mga hindi nag-high school o hindi nakapagtapos ng high school. I just want to know because in theory, itong ALS is a bridging pro... In theory, this ALS... Uh, sorry, in the perfect world, dapat walang nag-ALS. Correct? Dapat lahat nag-high school at nagtatapos ng high school. In a perfect world. No? But our world is not perfect. In fact, makikita nga natin that the completion rate Siguro pinakamataas na is 96%. No? Ibig sabihin, meron ka talagang 4% na hindi nagtatapos. No? May nagda-drop out talaga. Yun ang sinasalo natin. But that is the DepEd system. You have also people who don't attend school whatsoever. No? Ito yung mga nag insurgent ito yung mga uh, ito yung nagbubundok. No? Marami rin yun. No? So, that's why it's important to know this number because then it gives credence that we have to institutionalize this because kung historically hindi nga na perfect na 100% ang nagtatapos ng high school then this program uh, needs to be institutionalized because the world will never be perfect no? we will have people who will not finish high school and people who will probably don't school will not go to school uh, at all no 
So that's the logic why we want to institutionalize it. My ne next question is yung, kanina you mentioned that the Bureau of ALS was, nev was never, correct, never created. So until now, it's a task force. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in 2016, when the rationalized structure was implemented, the Bureau of Alternative Learning System before, which was in existence since 1998, 20 years ago, was dissolved. And so the staff or the officials of the former Bureau were distributed to the different newly created bureaus in the central office. Some went to the Bureau of Curriculum Development, the rest went to the Bureau of Learning Delivery, and so on and so forth. The so logic for the dissolution? Uh, is the uh, rationalization, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we were not part of the change management team before, so uh, I don't think I can actually give the very reason why that was dissolved. Existence of the ALS program is through a task force right Yes, now. sir. Actually, it was only this February of 2019 that the secretary created the task force upon our prodding because it was in my bureau before, the Bureau of Learning Delivery, that the, the ALS program was lodged because it's delivery mechanism. But in the Bureau of Learning Delivery, I handled Madrasa Ed, SPED, IP Ed, uh, Kindergarten, etc. So ALS was there only as a program. So we found it, the ALS was never stopped. Uh, only that the operation and the structure in governance in the central office was dissolved. So uh, in our initiative, we created a very small unit of ALS in the Bureau of Learning Delivery, but we found it very challenging because it was very difficult to coordinate the entire program with the rest of the stakeholders. And so we requested for a separate focal office. That is why the task force was created. And now we're hoping for the reversion of the Bureau, hopefully. That, that's what we need from you, ASEC, to give us a proposal of which legally we will create that permanent home for ALS. No? Uh, if it's the Bureau of ALS, then you have to suggest to us uh, what is the right uh, office or the right name for that office. So we give it a home. Because structurally, we have to give it stability. A task force can be dissolved. No? any time and it doesn't send the right message because a task force is ad hoc in nature eh. no so so sabi, parang nasa isip ng tao nga na eh yun nga gusto natin lahat pumasok ng eskwelahan therefore one point in time we don't need else but looking at the numbers we will per more, more most likely perpetually need else because uh meron kang ang nagda drop out meron kang ang pumupunta sa bundok meron tayong insurgency problem that we need to mainstream we have drug issues also so perpetually we will need the ALS program and we need stability no in that program that's what hence meron tayong batas ngayon no? so we need that proposal we, we had some proposals but maganda manggaling sa inyo kasi yo kayong end user no? if i may add mr chair uh noon pong pumasok kami yun nga uh Sinasabi po namin, sinasabi po ng, ni Presidente na uh, one of his legacy programs will be ALS. Pero nga po, wala po yung, yes, 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 it's in his sauna. And uh, yung achievements po, yung mga enrollment po namin ay mentioned in the 2019 sauna as well. Uh, pero noon pong nawala po yung BALS, akala po ng buong DepEd, wala ng ALS. Mawawala because there's no bureau eh. No? So uh, we will, Mr. Chair, we will submit ito pong uh, proposal namin and if I may add, tignan po din natin ito uh, on a lifelong learning perspective then i-introduce oh, po know. natin uh, Actually nga ASIC um, ambat eh, kasi parang papat ata may convergence kayo with TESDA and kasi, CHED, and CHED, and CHED. Kasi, di ba, parang, um, pwede nyo nang i-incorporate din sa module yung kunwari mag-aaral sila maging karpentero mm -hmm. i-incorporate nyo na yung skills and yung basic ed in pa kumaga isang bahay na lang baka isa yun dun sa pwedeng um, pag-aralan yeah. Yeah, yeah mr mr chairman i i 
completely agree with uh, Senator Binay. Yung incorporate yun yung mga skills sa uh, uh, development program na yun dahil alam natin itong kinikater natin na mga learners ay mga karamihan dyan, mga father na and they are supporting their family. So while, while uh, gaining the basic education, they are also learning something for their livelihood to support their family. So I agree with the Senator Binay. I-coordinate ninyo sa CHED. Ano ba? TESDA? TESDA. TESDA. Maganda yan. More appealing yan on the part of the uh, prospective learners na malaman na, oh, pag-graduate natin dito, meron na tayong high school diploma, meron pa tayong uh, carpentry or uh, par uh, agriculture uh, skills. Maganda po. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may. Uh, Napaka-importante po nung... Uh, ma-incorporate po na meron tayong uh, skills training for our learners. Kasi po sinasabi nga po natin kanina, 55% of them are employed, so they have to upskill also. Uh, meron pong opportunity cost sa kanila bago ma-attend sila. So one incentive for them to attend is for them to learn another skill. Kaya po yun pong sa budget namin, even po for 2020, we're proposing uh, na magkaroon po ng pambayad ng assessment para po sila makakuha ng NC national certification, para yung mga learners po natin, ay ready na po din silang magtrabaho. Because uh, we do recognize na for the fourth industrial revolution, hindi na lang po enough. I mean, I mean, yung required skills, they have to learn how to read, to write, and to count. Advanced cognitive skills, problems, kasama po dyan, problem solving, critical thinking. They need life skills as well to be employed. Tapos po, yung skills, skill to do a job. So we are endeavoring and suggesting in our budget na magkaroon po ng pang-NC kasi po ngayon hindi po shouldered yung pambayad po, yung assessment. Yung assessment niyo ba, written lang yan? Or may actual? Sa, sa test na po sila pwedeng magpa so that they can get the NC. Although, yun nga, ang sinasabi po namin, di ba, na um, ngayon po ang basihan ng performance ng ALS ay dun po sa passing rate ng ANE at completion. Out of, pag, pero pag hindi sila nakapasa, even if they spend a year, wala pong certification eh. Parang, wala, parang walang nangyari sa buhay nila. But if we will have the certifications, we call micro-certifications, that if you finish these modules, we can certify that, you know, this is what you can do. Uh, we can tell the oh, employers. Yes. Pero as like during the previous hearing, Mr. Chair, di ba na-raise din tong issue ng certification na in a way, may, may nagtitake ng ALS na parang nai-intimidate sila dun sa pagtitake ng exam. Kasi nga, di ba parang it's another validation of their failure kung hindi sila papasa. Parang may ganong na-raise na point during the previous hearing na um, or isa, isang reason yon and another reason yung yung cost then for them to to take those those exams or yung iba naman sa kanila gusto lang naman mag, matutong magbasa at mag magbilang eh so bakit kailangan mag pa ng ganong certification i mean yun lang yung mga points na raised during the previous year uh, kaya napakaimportante po uh, we are retraining and retooling our teachers yun pong pag masinsin na pag-fill up ng individ individual learning agreements. Because when they go to the program, dapat po nakaset doon, ano po ang gusto mong matutunan sa pag-ALS mo? Kasi it can, it, it, it will show also your achievement. Eh. Pag na-achieve mo ito sa ganitong oras, uh, sa ganitong period, then it's an achievement for you and it serves as a motivation for them to go on. Halimbawa, BLP sila basic literacy program. Natapos po nila iyon, a certificate can be given. Oh, they can do this. And then they can proceed to the next level. Elementary. Elementary. Magbigay ng test. Uh, yung, yung teacher po ang... Mobile teacher. Yung mobile teacher ang nagtetest at siya po ang... Tinetest po niya at siya rin po yung kasama ng learner sa paggawa ng individual learning agreement. But as we were going around, ito po kasi yung nangyayari. As we were going around community learning centers, pag tinignan ko po, yung mga surprise visits ko, pag sinabi ko po, ah, pakita ng portfolio, individual learning agreements na mga estudyante mo, yung iba po, blanco. Hindi po na-fill upan. Kaya po yun po yung sinasabi po namin, napaka-importante na i-retrain din ang ating mga teachers, those who conduct ALS sessions from the, uh, from uh, ensuring na meron pong individual learning agreements to 
yung pag-assess sa kanila, sa functional literacy nila, ano bang level ka talaga? So that we can come up with yung uh, recognition of prior learning. Kung sampung taon na siyang karpintero, at any one point, meron pong hagip na competency yan sa curriculum. And we should be able to um, determine that and measure that. Yan po yung mga maraming ginagawa ang task force ngayon on those so that we can uh, further uh, validate and accredit. Yung pong alam na po, ah, bilang adult learners po itong mga to at bilang nagtatrabaho po sila. So, yun po yung mga ginagawa po namin ngayon, ways forward, and we hope that we'll get, we'll set all these things early, early on, para po magtuloy-tuloy na po. Yes, Asik. Um, nabanggit ni Chair na the number is 24 million yung dropout. But hindi naman dun sa 24 million na yun yung cannot read, cannot write, and cannot count. So out of that 24 million, ilan dun yung cannot read, write, and cannot count? We will have to extract, ma'am. But uh, sa enrollment po namin, sa enrollment po namin in the last three years, nasa 178,000 basic literacy. Basic literacy ay nasa... No, 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 no. Eh, 178,000 yung nag-enroll sa inyo. Yes. But what is the universe of Filipinos who cannot even read, write, and count? Senator, <laughs> medyo po mahirap po. We're joined by the Literacy Coordinating Council. Uh, Mr. Mendoza, maybe you can, can share with us your findings. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Senator. Uh, according to the FLEMS, or the Functional Literacy Survey conducted by PSA, and that was in 2013, one out of ten Filipinos are illiterate or non-literate. So uh, when it comes to functional literacy, it's 96%. 96% of all Filipinos are uh, functionally literate, and 90.3% are non-literate. So that was in 2013, and uh, PSA is currently conducting the 2019 survey for functional literacy po. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, for 2019, for 2019, our enrollment under the Basic Literacy Program is totaling to 46,006. So that's uh, the basic literacy learners that we are catering for this year, 2019, 46,006, all in all, all over the country. Can you repeat that again? Uh, we have 46,006. Enrolled in the basic literacy program for 2019 alone. Pero director, yun yung mga dep ed programs. Pero uh, mga including the dep ed procured. Yeah, meaning pero paano yung mga NGOs? Kasama nakasama pa, na po dito. Na we have the breakdown we so can give you. Store, Pitogo, kasama, kasama na, na po dito. May breakdown po kami ng enrollment. So we can just provide the, the committee of the breakdown. Ma, sino ba ang kwan? Sino ang task force commander ng ALS? If this is a task force, sinong commander niyan? Overall, ha? overall commander po namin. Siyempre si Secretary Liling. Si Secretary Liling Briones. Pero Siya po ako rin. po yung kanyang deputy. Apo. Okay, thank you, thank you. We're also joined by a few uh, uh, resource persons. Uh, si Ms. Professor Maria Arzadon from UP. Ah, wala siya. Okay. Si Professor Efren Lubugin. Sir, any any comments? Uh, magandang umaga po, uh, um, Mr. Chair and Senator uh, Binay and Senator De La Rosa. Um, uh, kami po ay natutuwa na nabasa na po namin yung second version at uh, natutuwa kami kasi nasama na yung 7 to 12 year old 
uh, doon sa mga learners kasi dati 14 and up. So malaking tulong po yun, especially doon sa mga geographically isolated areas na binanggit ko po doon sa huling hearing. Um, isa pong uh, tinitingnan namin ngayon, we have a, a partnership na sisimulan with our ALS Task Force. Uh, yung nabanggit kanina para doon sa Palawan, ng mga nag, uh, balabak area, ng mga nagmamigrate sa Saba. Ang isang tinitingnan po namin doon ay yung interagency approach. Uh, baka ma maganda po na tingnan natin kung pa paano maisama doon sa bill. Na, kasi nga po pag tinitingnan natin kanina sa discussion, yung problema ng, yung gawain ng ALS just not, does not just involve DepEd. It also di involved the ILG, the SWD, no, LGUs. So baka maganda pong nandun yung interagency approach, no? Uh, TESDA, mga ganun po. So, yeah, professor, yung mm. itong case dito sa Palawan, hindi ba technically this forms part of human trafficking? Uh, yes po, may, may ganun pong uh, component. Pero ang inaano po kasi natin ngayon, uh, si, ang, ang DEPED po ay noong 2000, I think 2000, 16 or 17, nagsimula na sila mag-intervene, pero nagkakaroon tayo ng problema sa offshore approach. So, ngayon po, ang tinitingnan ng, ng DepEd ay dito tayo mag-intervene sa mismong offshore natin. So, yung pong supply, supply na, 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 mga, na mga kabataan na pumupunta doon para magtrabaho. So, dito muna tayo mag-intervene. So, nagkaroon po tayo ng research kasama ang DepEd nung May at nakakita tayo ng more than 200 out-of-school youth with, within, in different islands doon sa Palawan. So, ang DepEd po ay uh, uh, mag, uh, katulong ang BRAC ay magkakaroon kami ng isang pilot testing starting next year po uh, para tingnan itong ano na to. So, ang isa pong sinasuggest namin doon, Senator Chair, ay yung interagency approach. Uh, palagay ko po napakahirap kumilos para sa DepEd na walang suporta nitong iba't ibang agency na ito. Kasi sabi ko nga po doon sa last hearing natin, birth certificate pa lang malaking problema na, malaking barrier na po yun. So kung nandyan po ang DILG para tulungan kami sa birth certificate ng mga bata, malak ma malaking tulong na po yun na matanggal yung isang barrier nila for learning. So yun yung po yung nakikita namin na essential para dito sa bill yung Kasi asek pag walang birth certificate, hindi sila may ano? Uh, nasa ano po namin yan, parte ng inclusive ed policy po namin na yung mga documentary requirements ay maging medyo liberal po kami. Pero po kasi, uh, kailangan po nila ito, take for example, pag nagbagi exam po sila, lalo na for ALS, no? uh, they, have, they need to have uh, proof talaga na yun po yung age na, especially they're out of school, they, yung, we need to establish na hindi sila school age. Uh, but uh, marami pong innovations ang mga tao natin sa field. Take for example, I know of a principal in, I know of a principal in Lima, uh, Zamboanga Registry. At yung local civil registry ay umakyat doon sa bundok. Na, 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 you, you will see it when you go to Zamboanga. And uh, ayun, doon po ni register on the spot, late registration, yun pong mga bata. So innovations like that. Again, uh, I like what Efren is saying na hindi po kakayanin na DepEd lang at hindi po kakayanin na task force lang. Definitely, we need the convergence uh, with our other uh, partners in government. Mr. Chair, yung concept ng uh, interagency approach, I, I fully support that. Alam nyo yung kung meron tayong ICAD sa war on drugs, dapat meron din tayong ICALS sa war on illiteracy. Diba? Well, let's wait sa war on illiteracy, against illiteracy. ICALS, Enter uh, Agency Committee on uh, Alternative Learning uh, System. Diba? Tama yun. Maganda yun. Uh, last point lang. Thank you, uh, Senator Delers. Ilan ho ba itong, because uh, I, I read na parang there's 7 million Filipinos ang walang birth certificate. Ilan ba talaga, based on your data, ilan yung walang birth certificate? We, nalalaman lang po namin na wala silang birth certificate pag hindi po sila nakakapag-enroll. Or, kung halimbawa, mag-graduate po sila, tapos biglang, um, gagraduate sila, nawala pala silang birth certificate kasi inaalaw namin silang mag-enroll. Pero before they graduate, yung lahat ng requirements na kinukuha namin, i-require na namin. Halimbawa, grade 1, o sige, pasok ka na kasi wala kang birth certificate. Pero, 
pagdating ng grade 6, magagraduate siya, dapat naman sana nakakuha na si nanay at si tatay ng birth certificate or proof kahit man lang uh, yun pong local, local civil registry. And, and this is a common problem during enrollment. Yes, birth certificate. Uh, Madam Senator. Uh, uh, last point lang po, uh, Senator, is that doon sa bill, uh, iniisip po namin na baka po pwedeng ma-include yung mga learners on education in emergencies. Kasi po sa ating uh, observation, tum tum humahaba na yung panahon ng recovery kapag ang isang, isang lugar ay naka-experience ng emergency like disaster, natural disaster. So uh, kung minsan po kami mga NGI, NGOs, nahihirapan na mag-implement ng, ng response to education in emergencies kasi wala kaming batas na nagsasabi na, na you know, pwedeng i-alls ang mga batang ito kapag matagal ang recovery. So, inisip po namin na total, in, na enumerate naman po natin lahat ng type of learners. Baka idag, pwedeng idagdag yung mga et, in emergencies. Learners in emergencies. Opo. Yun lamang po. And the rest, ipapadala na lang po namin by email yung aming uh, suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, we're also joined by Inet, uh, headed by Ms. Flora Arellano. Ma'am. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, lalo na po sa kay Senator Gatchelian, ay, Sen Senator Gatchelian, and then Senator Binay, and Senator Bato. <laughs> okay. At sa lahat ng nanaririto ngayon, nakamakasama ko kapartner namin sa Department of Education. Ang unang-una ko pong uh, nais uh, banggitin bilang supporta rin sa ating um, ALS program sa DepEd. Um, yung kanina pong pagtatanong din ni Senator Gatchelian, kaugnay ng uh, ano nga ba ang uh, tindig o lokasyon? What is the location of ALS within the DepEd system? Malaki pong uh, diferensya. Dahil po sa usapin na lang ng budget, it's below 1%. Below, below... <laughs> Zero, actually, zero point uh, something uh, percent. And then, how can we, how can we able to uh, expand and reach out all learners that are non-literate and uh, employ teachers who will be mobile teachers deployed in these power plant areas, uh, rural areas, and so on, if the budget for ALS is very limited. So, maganda sigurong isang uh, i-consider natin ito dun sa uh, pag kokorek din po, no? How we treat ALS bilang isang parallel learning uh, option, dapat isa siyang napakahalagang uh, larangan uh, of accessing education within DepEd. Yun po yung isa. And then secondly, uh, we were already in the uh, advocacy for ALS uh, before the RAT planning, RAT uh, 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 yeah, rationalization. And then, um, sad, sad to say, the, the Bureau on Alternative Learning was uh, abolished. And subsequently, um, nawala rin po yung ANE test natin, na suspend din, hindi po ba? So, ang, ang punto lang po dito, uh, we would like to include in the proposed bill uh, to support DepEd in creating the Bureau of Alternative Learning System, not just a task force for us. Let's, um, uh, we propose that we create again a Bureau of Alternative Learning System to be headed by a by an undersecretary for ALS designated by the Secretary of Education. And then it shall be the implementing arm of the ALS programs, serve all learners regardless of age, race, color, gender, and belief, including the OSY and adults and, uh, dis and other disability learners no? through community-based programs outside of the school system. So yun po yung isang proposal namin 
And then, um, with regards to uh, the establishment of ALS Community Learning Centers, um, we would like to uh, we would like to propose to establish inclusive ALS centers accessible to all learners and, and ensure a safe learning environment. And then uh, with regards to the interagency approach, so probably it should not only be interagency within the government, but as well include the civil society organization in the partnership or in the mechanism to ensure that um, we can really collaborate and uh, uh, respond to the needs of our non-literate learners in the respective communities. And in line with this, since we have a very limited fi funding for ALS, we did a GAA, um, which we propose that we increase it, but then we can also tap and utilize the uh, special education fund to fund the needs of our ALS in the respective communities. So this is one uh, avenue where we can source out additional funding for our ALS programs. And then um, probably my colleagues may, with regards to uh, lifelong learning and certification. Sir, thank you, sir. Good morning, uh, Chair Gatchalian. And nice to see in person Senator Bato and Senator Binay. So, sa ano kami, INET Philippines, pero ito ay composition, it's a collision, it's 130 NGO. So, ang isa lang, kasi parang yung ALS, parang laging nasa isip natin, although kasi ando dun yung demand sa far-flung communities. Pero meron po, katulad po sa Valenzuela, meron din talaga sa urban, nag exist pa rin yung ating mga dropouts or hindi nakatapos. In fact, doon sa member ng, ng INET, may nag implement nito sa Kalaokan at even sa Pasig. So, uh, we might as well ilagay din natin yung urban poor communities kasi madami yan. Tapos ngayon po dahil Senador Bato pumupunta dito, no? dahil may mga gera sa probinsya, dumadami po ang populasyon natin dito sa, sa mga syudad. So we might as well i-consider din po natin yung dun sa ating bill, yung dun sa urban poor communities. So yun po yung isa, kaya nag-submit po kami sa office po ninyo ng position paper din ng, ng ALS. Yung isa lang, with concern dun sa, sa DepEd po, Kasi may mga data na nilabas kanina. May impact po talaga. We really support yung pagbabalik ng BALS. Kasi isa kami sa nalungko talaga sa nawala dun sa BALS. Tapos, kaya nasuspend kasi yung A&E. So, siguro kaya may effect dun sa da datos natin. Ang konti din yung nage exam uh, Tapos, this might not be in the low, but for the DepEd, I-consider din natin yung, ano, yung quality siguro ng pag -e exam Kasi po, for the information, marami po tayong nagkakaroon ng talagang pag-aaral dun sa, ano, sa, sa ALS natin. Pero ang nangyayari, ang sinasabi ng aming mga learners, yung exam na binibigay sa kanila for the ANE, hindi naman po yun pit doon sa napag-aralan nila sa ALS. That's one thing. Ano? So, yun, yung isa, ma'am. So, yun yung isa. Tapos, usapin po ng language. Kasi, gusto nating maging, meron, nakita ko po sa bill nyo, Senator, yung culture sensitive, yung may ganon. Pagdating po sa ANE exam, puro English. So, eh, tinuturo sa kanila, do sa community, on their own language, para maintindihan po nila. So, asan dun po yung culture sensitivity doon sa mismong exam. So, Pag makikita mo po ito, meron pong mga barangay leaders na kaya po sila nag ALS dahil para meron namang silang certificate dahil barangay kagawad niya sila gan. So, mahihiya po sila pagdating dun sa ANE, bigla silang bagsak because of that. So, pero 
e eh, ewan ko ho ah, sa certification kasi po, alimbawa, sa governance, nakapagpasa po ng mga barangay ordinance, tapos biglang bagsak. Pero sa usapin po ng governance, di po ba accreditation na po yun? Kasi ang dami nilang community projects, ang dami lang mga ordinansa, na napaunlad nila yung barangay nila o napaunlad nila yung sudad nila. So may mga ganun po, kasi these are the persons na talagang makikater mo po sa ALS. Pag pumunta ko po sa ground, mga barangay officials po yan. Diyan tayo nag-uusap. Mga barangay nutrition scholars natin yan. Mga BHW po natin yan. So yun po siguro yung, yung papano talaga, yung mag-serve mag pa yung ALS natin. So tinasabi talaga nating alternative learning system. So marami pong ganong consideration. At yung isa po, yung dagdag po namin sa INET, nung inalis din po ng DepEd yung service providers. Kasi nung dati po, may service providers, ALS, and this composed of the non-government organizations. Maliit lang nga po, 100,000 po yun eh, sa service providers dati. And in fact, dun sa 100,000 po na binibigay ng DepEd, like for example, ang lakas community in the Sambales, mga Aita po yan, yung 100,000 pesos po na yan, ang nangyayari po, 70,000 lang po ang napupunta sa kanila. Kasi yung 30,000 po, inaalis na po yun ng DepEd, ang sinasabi po nila, that's part of their monitoring expenses. So in effect po, 70,000 lang ang nabibigay. That is very true, may documentation po kami niyan. So yun po yung isa nating mga gusto. Okay na yun, ang, ang maganda lang doon sa magkakaroon ng service provider, bukod doon sa napakaliit na budget, nagkakasya naman kami sa maliit na budget. In fact, we have 1,500 in Rodis. Yung sa mga ganun po, no? Tapos, meron pong ganun. So, mal malaking bagay. Bakit po? Doon natin nakikita yung sinasabi ni Senator Bato na inter-agency na tulungan. Government and non-government. So, malaking bagay yung kasi nare-recognize yung, ano, yung effort ng civil society sa pagkakaroon ng service provider contract scheme. So, it's not just about the amount, but also the recognition na meron ding nagkakaroon ng effort ng ganito outside of the initiative of the Department of Education. Kasi seryoso doon sa pagbibigay ng edukasyon sa komunidad. Ngayon, yung isa po, yung baka kasi sa data din ng DepEd, ang nakocover po kasi yung ano eh, DepEd contracted na ALS. Meron po kasing nag implement mga members ng INET yan na non-contracted ng, ano, ng tawag dito ng DepEd. So, ma maari po with the LCC, nakaupo rin po kami sa LCC, yun po yung gusto namin, sir, di ba po? Dinidatabase po natin ngayon, dinidatabase po namin with, together with LCC, yung mga even the non-DepEd, di ba po, service providers for really literacy work. So yun, yung mga ganon na sabihin natin, uh, baka mas mag-improve pa yung mga datos natin, yung picture ng ating effort for all the uh, achieving this life learning na, lifelong learning na ating commitment no, as uh, isang bansa for education. So yun yung, ano, yun yung mga gusto namin, doon din na ma-consider uh, doon, so we depend. Uh, yun, gusto namin suportahan pala yung inyong micro certification. Kasi halimbawa, yung barangay captain, na kahit hindi naman siya nakapasa sa ANE, pero pwede mo siyang air certificate ng governance, barangay governance, pwede po yun. So, thank you po. Thank you. We also, are you, okay, sige ho. Um, uh, magandang maga po sa lahat. Um, Miss uh, Guarina? Guarina po. Teacher po ako for 42 years sa public school, uh, although, although retired na ako ngayon. Ang, uh, ang, ang concern ko, yung sa side ng teachers, kasi ang ibinibigay niya lang sa teacher, yung basic salary nila. What about yung sa, sa formal kasi meron sila mga clothing allowance, ah, meron din lahat. And then, paano sila tumatanggap ng sweldo? Katulad ba rin nung <laughs> katulad din? Okay. Okay. Uh, Has, uh, yung hazard po sana ma 
it's different from transportation. Yung hazard. Kasi talagang mahirap magturo ng alternative learning. Uh, another point, uh, gusto kong inconsider. Usually, ang DepEd, maganda yung program. Pero pagdating sa implementation, medyo may konting sablay. Like, uh, ako matagal na akong teacher ng, ano eh, ng open high school. Uh, matagal na akong, uh, since, uh, siguro mga 20 years akong teacher ng, since na mag-start ang open high school sa Rizal High School, ako ay teacher ng open high school. Ang madalas problema namin, at nung magkita-kita kami doon sa isang forum, nung lang namin nalaman na may pondo pala para sa materials. Samantalang kami nagtuturo on our own. Bahala na kami kung anong gamitin namin libro at paano namin i-align. Kaya kadalasan nakita na lang yung pondo. Ay, may pondo pala. Later na lang lumabas yung pondo. Para sa kahit sa copying lang ng mga materyales. So, yung nakita kong problema nyo kanina na pa, yung mga modules, walang, walang, teach, walang modules sa mga teachers, hanggang ngayon problema pa rin yan. Uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we're also joined by several NGOs. Si Pastor Pitogo. Oh, well, he, I think he went to. Mr. Uh, Miss De, De La Paz. Save the children. Any, any comments? Hey. Good morning po, um, Senators uh, Gatsali and Binay and Senator Bato and our um, partners from the Department of Education and other civil society organizations. Um, Save the Children would like to register its support. We strongly support the enactment of um, Senate Bill 740. We submitted our position paper and some of those um, points that we raised in the position paper were, were already considered in the um, second draft of the policy. Um, siguro lang, sir, in relation to we support this because uh, this is um, consistent with the inclusive education framework. No? Gusto natin lahat ng mga bata ay makapag-aral dahil ito ay consistent sa kanilang karapatan. So, Happy National Children's Month din po um, sa lahat ng nandito ngayon. Um, Tapos, kaugnay dito po, pinag-uusapan natin na banggit kanina yung doon sa mga batang uh, may disability. No? And uh, that's also one of the bills that we support um, under the committee of um, Senator Gatsalian and Inclusive Education for Learners with Disabilities that we also look forward to participating in eventually when it's, uh, when it's heard. Because I think this will, this will also be related um, to, to this one. No? Kasi nakita natin kanina na limited nga po yung ALS currently to um, yung visual impairment lang. So kailangan makonsider din po natin yung ibang mga bata with um, other disabilities para talagang matugunan natin yung kanilang karapatan para makapag-aral o doon sa edukasyon. Sa experience lang din po ng Save the Children because we have um, conducted a study, no, yung ALS sa Navotas in particular, I mentioned this, I shared this during the hearing at the House of Representatives, yung isa pong hindrance ay yung mga magulang, dinidiscourage din nila yung mga anak nilang mag-ALS. Kasi yung concern po nila ay gusto nila makapagtrabaho na yung kanilang mga anak kesa mag-aral pa. Siyempre, meron pong pangailangan. So, kahit po ilagay ng DepEd yung ALS doon sa area nila at palapitin sa kanila, yung mga magulang po yung ayaw silang papasukin. So, ang sinasuggest po ng Save the Children, baka mas i-intensify natin yung program natin among parents also to encourage them, make them understand the value of uh, basic literacy. Um, yun po siguro baka pwedeng maging isang kampanya, a component that we also reach out to the parents. This is in line with the inter, um, hindi lang interagency, multi-sectoral approach no, to education, particularly sa ALS. Um, isa rin po sigurong component, hindi lang po namin siguro ano pa paano talaga operationalize, pero baka merong sense of parang empowerment among ALS learners about their rights. In the National Baseline Study on the Violence Against Children, isa po sa lumabas ang pinakamataas ang violence among marginalized groups, kasama po ang out-of-school youth, indigenous um, um, children, no? So, baka po may ganung klaseng pagtuturo rin na nakasama sa ALS, patungkol naman sa kanila mga karapatan para alam nila kung paano nila protektahan yung sarili nila. Ito po yung child protection component ng ALS that we also would like to um, put forward. Doon po sa children in emergencies, um, sinusuportahan po natin yan. Ang Save the Children po, isa sa mga nangunang nagtulak noong um, Children and Emergencies Act. At baka po magandang tignan din yung nabanggit kaninang suggestion to include um, in this um, policy yung Children and Emergencies doon sa Comprehensive Emergency Program for Children 
na nakapaloob nakapaloob po doon sa RA uh, 10821. Um, tapos baka po maganda ring mabanggit, ito po ay nasa house version yung capacity building ng mga mobile teachers, ng volunteers at ng learners. Nabanggit po during the house hearing na meron pong mga programa uh, kaugnay diyan ng Department of Education but Uh, maybe it's also something that we can consider in the policy para po mas ma-institutionalize yung continuous, continuous um, capacity building among our uh, volunteers uh, in the ELS. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Meron pa tayong kasama si Mr. Joaquin Olitokit. Sir? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Honorable Senator Binay. Mr. Joaquin, you're, you're with DepEd or are you with the uh, NGO? I am the husband of a district ALS coordinator. No? Okay. And I had been supportive of ALS for the last 15 years that we have worked together. No? I'm not being paid by DepEd. I am spending my own money to support the the program of, of Deep Ed because my wife is there. I'm even spending my own money coming here. This is the second time I'm here. Uh, there are several points I want to stress upon with the bill. I deeply appreciate the initiative of Senator Wynn to really put more power to the teaching of ALS because if we're talking of 24 million, that is almost one-fourth of the entire population of our country. Uh, let, me correct, let me connect that with our rice crisis, with our very low agricultural productivity. No? Magsasaka po ako. Ang marami na kliyente ng ALS ay nasa rural area po. Kung bakit napakababa din ang ating teknolohiya sa baba at nagkakaroon ng maraming krisis sa pagkain ay direct effect po yan ng napakababang edukasyon ng ating mga tao sa kanayunan. Kaya sina-challenge ko po ang mga legislators. I don't know kung nakaabot po yung aking proposed uh, provisions kay Attorney Cagente. I emailed what what I wanted included in the bill of Senator Gatsalian. I was not just proposing a part of the proceeds ng ESF because that is very small for, for fourth and fifth class municipalities where the bulk of the ALS na nasa rural area lives. No? I was proposing that part of the era na binibigay sa barangay, sa munisipyo, sa probinsya, ay kaltasan. Kasi nagkakaltas tayo sa calamity, 5% yata, and that is a continuing deduction every year na nag-accumulate na, kung walang, walang calamity. Ang calamity ng kamangmangan at kulang ng karunungan ay long-term ang effect sa ating bayan. Napakahirap po yung i-correct and that will compound that will prevent our country from becoming a very developed country. Why? Malayo na ang narating ng Korea, ng, ng Taiwan, ng Japan, ng Israel. It was because their population were well educated. Like sa Korea, binigyan nila bawat farmer ng computer, nakalink sa internet. So, nag-aaral yung farmer. At ang mga bata nila, ang sabi sa report na nabasa ko, paglabas sa school, Pupunta sila sa computer shop kasi may national tutor. No? Kami ang pinakaunang ALS na nag-implement ng mobile delivery ng digital literacy. We are the first e-escuela center in the Philippines. Way back in 2008. In fact, ang computers namin, ang printer, ang ginagamit ng ALS Division of Camarinesur sa unang mga taon. Why? Because we deeply realize that inclusion of the of the internet of the computers sa pag-aaral ng out of school youth will fast track will prepare our kids and anong preba nito 
dalawang graduate namin nagtake ng entrepreneurship sa Ateneo Dinaga as scholars. Ang isa graduate, cum laude. They are now both employed. Lahat ng graduates namin na uh, nag-abroad, naka-abroad, and they are sending back money. Last time I was telling you about yung nagsasabay yung ALS at saka nagsasabay yung electrical installation at saka electronics, hindi pa nakakapasa sila sa ALS, nakapasa na sila doon sa ano, sa electronics. But I will tell you frankly, sir, nakapasa muna sila sa ALS, ANE, bago sila na-hire sa Laguna. Kaya, <laughs> we are very thankful of that, no? So, let me go back to that. Yung kailangan very radical tayo sa, sa programang ito kasi, because it affects one-fourth of our population. Huwag na nating antayin. Kahit wala pang masyadong comprehensive na datos, alam na natin kung gaano kalaki ang problema. And dapat malaki din ang solusyon. And that gives me to the last point, no? Hindi sa wala akong tiwala sa deep ed. Yung kinsing taong ginugol ko, ma'am, sa pagsuporta ng, ng deep ed, nakatatlo na kaming bagsak, ma'am, sa motorsiklo ng asawa ko. Halos na bali na ang tuhod niya, ma'am, dahil sa pagpupunta namin sa mga barangay through the very slippery roads. In fact, last Saturday, we were almost killed. Nag-summer result ang trimobile namin. To tell you the truth, do, uh, Yusek Dad San Antonio is in my barangay right now. Yes. Because we are we are closing the second year of our Buklatun program, which offers continuous reading sessions for for the elementary sa grade 3. Kasi ang theory ko, kaya hindi umaabante sa higher level, kasi hindi marunong magbasa, hindi marunong magintindi ng bumabasa. Kaya sabi namin, para hindi na dumagdag ang ALS, learner natin, tukuyin na natin doon sa baba pa lang. And nakumbinsi namin, ang, ang mayor namin, ang mayor namin, ang reading coach ngayon, pati yung anak niya na UN champion uh, of the environment, yung young champion of the, the environment, si Luis Mabulo. Sila yung dalawang reading coach at ang guest namin ay UC, si U6 Dad San Antonio. And I'm very thankful that he he acceded to our request to grace the, the second year of the program. Because we will continue it. Uh, sa ngayon po, eh, may pito ng eskwelahan. Gusto namin ubusin yung 18. Uh, we're we have solicited a lot of books. Yung mga adar na books. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good program. Uh, I okay. think I have, I have taken so much of your time. But I, I, I really feel, no? And unless we really address this thing, Ang sabi ni Lagwesma, ni Secretary Lagwesma, <laughs> hindi mapuputol yung problema kasi noong 1998, may apat na classrooms sa elementary school namin, presidente ako ng PTA, na non-readers. Yung non-readers na yun, nagpamilya. Kaya yung anak nun ngayon ang problema namin na non-readers. Kung nakinig sa akin ang principal noon na i-address yun, baka mababa ang non-readers sa aming barangay ngayon. Imagine sa barangay namin, to be proud about it, number eight kami sa, sa Camarines Sur, yung highest number of non-readers. No? Okay Statistics yan. Thank you, Mr. Joaquin. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Thank Senator. You. Thank you. And I hope basahin nyo yung provisions na rinopos ko sa inyo. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Bakir of uh, NCDA, any, any comments po? Okay, so isang mapagpala at mapagpalayang umaga sa ating lahat at sa ating magigiting na mga senador, Senador Gatchalian, Senador Binay, and Senador Bato. We at the National Council on Disability Affairs would like to commend also the senators who are also uh, very passionate in drafting the bills and proposing the bills on education because we strongly believe that Persons with disabilities should be integrated and mainstream in the society. And this will only come from educating them. So kanina po sa ating pag-uulat ay na nakita po natin at narinig na sa ALS po ay very limited lang po yung mga ina-accept ng persons with disabilities. So ang nasabi po kanina is... Um,
doon lang po sila nabibigyan ng uh, pagkakataon po yung mga blind or those with visual impairment. So we pray na lahat po ng types ng persons with disabilities ay matugunan po yung pangangailangan nila sa edukasyon because uh, the National Council on Disability Affairs is the policy making uh, body on all disability related matters and we have the subcommittee on education which is being chaired by DepEd. So, minsan po kasi na-alarma din po kami na even with inclusive education, medyo mabagal po yung implementation na kung saan nakikita po natin ng root cause is hindi pa po masyadong trained ang mga teachers. They are not well equipped to receive students with disabilities or learners with disabilities including po yung support even with the principals na hindi pa po sila talaga yung kanilang mindset ay hindi po nakatuon doon sa pangangailangan ng mga may kapansanan. And when we talk of persons with disabilities, nakikita po natin na kayo po yung opportunity cost sa amin naman po yung disability cost. Pag hindi po nakapag-aral ang mga taong may kapansanan ay nagiging burden po sa families kasi hindi po nakakapag-trabaho ang members ng family who are taking care of persons with disabilities. So, lumalaki po yung burden, lumalaki po yung cost, and even po doon sa ating sinasabi na uh, we reduce poverty. Paano po natin matutulungan kasi nasa threshold na rin po ng poverty ang majority of persons with disabilities. And for the information of everybody, the Philippines is a signatory to the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So in as much as we are a signatory and we are espousing disability inclusive development, we felt and we are fighting that no persons with disabilities should be left behind. So, dapat lahat ng pangangailangan po natin maibigay natin because I believe Filipinos are very human, very compassionate. And so, gusto ko lamang po i-share yung uh, very few salient points na tayo po sa Philippines, nagbibigay tayo ng report sa United Nations every two years. And ito po yung UN concluding observations and recommendations on the initial report of the Philippines regarding po doon sa Article 24 on education. And gusto ko lang po i-share na yung prevalence of the special education model and the lack of measures to provide for inclusive and mainstream education for persons with disabilities. So tamang-tama po yung tinatalakay natin ngayon. And the education of children, young persons, and adults with disabilities in regular educational facilities is hindered by the barriers of accessibility and the lack of universal design for learning and of reasonable accommodations in all academic and social aspects of student life. So isa po yung nakita natin kanina, yung lack of statistics. Ito po yung isang concluding observation, the general lack of quantitative data on access to education and the outcomes of education for persons with disabilities and inconsistency of data collected by different entities. And last po, we adhere to targets 4.5 and 4 of the Sustainable Development Goals to ensure equal access to all levels of education and vocational training and build and upgrade education facilities that are disability sensitive and safe. So yun lang po ang pwede namin ma-share but then we believe sa National Council on Disability Affairs, we are being helped by our partners from DepEd sa lahat ng mga NGOs of course and of course Again, we are uh, expressing our sincerest gratitude to Senator Gatchalian, Senator Binay, Senator Bato for this opportunity of having us here in this committee hearing. Thank you. Ma'am, I just want to ask, no, uh, in your opinion, inadequate ba ang support ng ALS to persons with uh, disabilities? Sa aking palagay po. Opo. <laughs> so, where is the where are the inadequacies? Saan po ang uh, pagkukulang nila? Ang inadequacies siguro po ma-point out natin kasi kanina na 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 pakinggan po natin sa report na hindi lahat po ng types of disabilities are being given the opportunity to uh, makakuha nga po ng ALS only the visually impaired or blind because they have braille. 
Pero po, how about students who are uh, hearing impaired, mga deaf, na kailangan din po nila ma-educate? How about those orthopedically handicapped? Yung mayroon po mga psychosocial disabilities, learning disabilities, kailangan din po matugunan siguro po. Di ba, kasi the disability has different cases, ano? Apo. And uh, for example, uh, a person with special needs, no? oh. especially uh, special needs, uh, special mental needs, pwede ba ang ALS to apply to this type of special needs? Because talagang kailangan mo a totally different uh, approach, no? I think uh, a one size ALS is not a one size fits all. I, we, we try to, yes. no, for cost sake. Pero okay. there are cases talaga for PWDs na uh, might uh, not be uh, appropriate, no? So I, I, I'm, I'm with you in terms of expanding the ALS program for PWDs. But there are also, I would assume there are also limitations. No? Yes, sir. Sig so may, may we uh, get some comments on uh, that? Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, there is actually a regular special education program being offered to a number of schools in the public school or the formal. And so uh, uh, for ALS, we admit that we cannot cater to these other exceptionalities by, by the fact that our teachers are not trained. In the regular SPED classes, the teachers there are SPED teachers and they receive higher salary than the regular teachers for ALS because they are specialized. Uh, they have specialization in, on hearing impairment, uh, visual impairment, uh, autism, all sorts of exceptionalities. That is why in the ways forward for ALS, we explore the possibility of being able to cater to out-of-school youth. The regular SPED classes being offered is for the in-school and those availing of the SPED program. But we acknowledge the fact that there are learners who really do not want to go to the school or get inside a campus. They, they abhor or they, they hate. They can't participate. There are learners like that. That's the reason why the alternative learning system uh, we see as one modality that these persons with disabilities can actually go to. But in the meantime, uh, our teachers aren't prepared yet for such highly specialized training on exceptionalities. And that is what we want to pursue as far as the roadmap of ALS is concerned. I assume that a uh, person with disability uh, in, in regard, person with, for example, hearing or speaking, these are, we can absorb that, no? Uh, in the regular ALS, correct? But I think the much more complicated disability, especially deals with mental uh, uh, disability, that needs special approach, no? And the ALS program might not be appropriate for that. So we should qualify that in the bill, no? But I, I would uh, subscribe to putting equal opportunity to PWDs in general, no? Yeah. Kasi, like, for example, uh, kung, let's say, let, let, let's say lang, hindi ka, let, let's say, uh, mo, hindi ka makalakad, no? You have disability. It doesn't mean that you cannot learn, no? Diba? Mr. Chair, the, the challenge din kasi, um, limited na po yung number ng trained natin on SPED in formal school. So, minsan pag mag a open natin, sabihin natin, in ALS, we will have mobile teacher items na sped ang specialization. Ang nangyayari po sa ground, nag-aagawan, mag-aagawan yan si formal and non-formal. Kung pupunta ba siya sa ALS o pupunta siya sa formal. So we have uh, situations like that. Take for example, yun pong sabi namin, kailangan namin ng may specialization sa science at math para sa ALS. But of course, at na, na makakatulong sa amin sa pagtuturo ng senior high school for ALS. Pero, uunahin po, usually, 
sa formal school kasi nga kulang pa po kami ng teacher din sa senior high school namin with those kinds of specialization. So, meron pong mga ganong nuance yung sitwasyon but we do acknowledge that uh, we, we really uh, understand yung pong sa mga uh, kasamahan po natin with, with uh, persons with disability for saying na no one left behind, lalo na po dapat sila, hindi po natin sila kakalimutan. Uh, I've seen several situations wherein minsan po kasi sa field, magaling mag-innovate. Magaling sila mag-innovate sa pag-cater sa ating mga persons with disability. Um, yun nga lang po, as a society rin, minsan hindi, hirap po kami i-capture sila kasi mins, minsan yung families are in denial Natatago po yung mga learners, natatago po yung bata. So they are not able to access education then, even if we have it, even if it's available. Dahil may barrier po minsan na sinasabi yung parents mismo, they're in denial that they have a child who needs special attention. But if the parents are in denial, they won't even uh, let them out of the house. I've seen situations, Senator, na ganun yung nangyayari. It's a matter of concept. Uh, we want uh, the ALS program to be responsive to PW need, the PWD needs. You know? uh, if it demands bigger budget, then we, we have to do so. You know? we, but we have to embed that in the bill so that conscious yung mga ALS implementers that we have to give special attention to PWDs. No? Uh, all right. So... Uh, Pastor Pitogo, any that, uh, last time you shared with us some of your uh, successes. Any anything more yeah. to share? One of our best practices in Sulads, like we have a deaf school in Malay Balay, uh, Malay Balay City. So um, it really gives us encouragement, advocacy. And we are drive on that uh, aspect to, you know, room around Bukidnon and Mindanao so that this, uh, itong pong mga batang ito ay talagang hindi ma-left behind. Isa po sa nagiging magandang uh, uh, nangyayari ngayon, kasi sa amin po sa Sulads, meron kaming heal program. Heal program. So, yung HEAL program, Health, Education, Agriculture, and Livelihood. So, parang nakakanker namin ang, ang dropouts. Kasi hindi na sila, na, min, uh, siguro nagkakasakit pero minsan na lang. Marunong na silang, uh, ma, marunong na nilang, marunong na sila mag, ano, alaga sa kanilang sarili. Uh, health, Education, Agriculture. Malawag kasi ang lupain sa bundok eh. So, organic farming. We bring experts, agriculturists, to our literacy centers. Nagkaka-income na rin sila. So, it, it conquers, you know, dropouts. That's why I'm always humbly telling this forum, Mr. Chair, that we have really a very satisfying uh, results to our learners passing rates because of that aspect heal program and that is one of our best practices in Sulad's Philippines thank you pastor uh, as last time si pastor mentioned that uh, their passing rate in Sulad's is uh, 80 percent 80 percent but when I ask uh, ma'am madam Jo Valiador the IP focal person uh, in fact, I have with me the materials. It's actually 90%. 90%? Yes. In According uh, one to month, to maas ng 10%. No, one month I was actually mistaken, Mr. Chair, oh, okay. of uh, saying 80%. One month, oh, October tayo nag-hearing eh. <laughs> I, I stand corrected. Uh, <laughs> but uh, ASEC, no? it seems to me that uh, NGOs, at least uh, in Sulad's case, it's quite effective, no? Because uh, doon sa presentation nyo kanina, from 2016 to 2018, your passing rate, uh, from 2005 to 2015, your passing rate is 20%, no? Tapos 2016 to 2018, 29%, no? So, over it, na nasa bordering 20s. But in Sulad, it's uh, 90%. So, 
I mean, outcomes wise, they're, 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 they're performing well. So do you think that uh, we should engage the private sector, the NGOs more? Because it seems to me that because of their, I guess, focus, attention, and also a, 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 a much nimbler structure, they can adjust quicker compared to a bigger DepEd structure, no? Uh, we sh do you think we should embed that in the bill to engage more NGOs like this? Uh, to make our lives easier. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, doon po sa aking presentation kanina ang sinabi ko po na one of the supply side challenges ay hindi ganun karobost ang partnership namin with NGOs and with CSOs kasi po nangangailangan ng guidelines, nangangailangan ng polisiya na updated. But nonetheless, uh, we do acknowledge at kausap ko po kanina si Pastor Pitogo and uh, uh, magkasama po kami sa NLA Awards at ng mga iba pa pong mga awards dahil napakaganda po ng performance ng kanilang uh, grupo. And we're saying, and I was telling him now maybe we can, DepEd can learn from your best practice and yung models po ng ating mga partners. Maybe in some areas it can be applied. Ito po yung isa po naming pinag-aaralan din ngayon na parang um, okay, we have mobile teachers mobile teacher items, but what if in certain areas, talagang NGOs ang magde-deliver? Yung mix po, we are, we're, we're coming up with the right mix because we do know na hindi naman po lang talaga uh, monopol, monopoly ng DepEd ang ALS. Kailangan po namin ng partners katulad nila. And admittedly, maganda po ang uh, outcomes, ang performance nila. And uh, we have to learn from them. DepEd has to learn from them. I, I would be very candid in saying that, Mr. Chair. As a, how do you, is there an accreditation process? What is the process to uh, engage these NGOs? Uh, previously, uh, Mr. Chair, meron po tayong contracting scheme which was suspended lang in 2016 uh, pending review. Kasi nga sinasabi po ni Ms. May Singko, halimbawa, 100,000 lang po yung... 110 yung binibigay pong support. Now we are reviewing it. Is it still adequate? Lalo na po with the new curriculum. If we will require certain things like uh, mas hahaba na po yung intervention, uh, mag magpo-photocopy po sila ng nap mas maraming learning modules, meron na pong digital citizenship, at kung i-require po natin na mag-deliver din po sila ng skills, then 110 pesos subsidy will not be enough. Diba? So ito po yung mga gagawin po natin. And of course, no, we have to uh, also see na baka po kasi padaanin pa sa procurement ang pag-engage sa mga uh, ka-partners natin na binibigyan po natin ng subsidy. So, ito po yung mga aaralin pa at kailangan din po namin ng guidance. Uh, we will be talking with COA also on this one. Pwede ba kaming magko-contract ng ganito? Like, uh, how does it work with the voucher system? Meron po tayong mga pag-uusapan na ganon. I think, uh, sir, lalong lalo na naging maingat na yung COA after that um, PDAF, yung mga NGOs na na, na, na abuso, di ba? So, <laughs> kaya parang nabigyan ng ibang kulay yung mga NGOs because of that, um, uh, ano yan, findings. But, um, Sir Chair, baka tingnan din natin, baka the committee can look at, baka pwedeng gawing incentive instead of um, si DepEd magbibigay ng subsidy. Baka may tax incentives or di ko alam kung anong um, types of incentive ang pwede nating ibigay kung, <laughs> kung magiging involved sila sa ALS. Mr. <coughs> uh, Chair, I, I, uh, I rather recommend sa, sa DepEd, no? kung pwede kopyahin natin yung, yung model nila dahil I am not surprised why SULAD is uh, <coughs> performing well sa kanilang ALS, ALS program dahil kung basihan natin, my personal experience really sa ating uh, war on drugs, lahat ng uh, drug rehabilitation center na run by the, by the church, yung affiliated sa church, yun ang pinaka-successful na mga Drug Rehabilitation Program. Uh, Adventist, si Your Honor. Adventist. Ah, Adventist. Oh, Adventist. Particular Adventist. Uh, yun ang pinaka-successful. Maybe, siguro, ano ba dyan? Yung, yung spirituality factor? Siguro, mas, mas maganda yung takbo pag uh, kasama palagi si Lord sa lahat ng uh, ating undertakings. Uh, 
yun po, eh, sa, eh, siguro, eh, kopyahin natin yung model nila. Uh, Pastor, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you, Senator Bato. Anyway, uh, last hearing, Mr. Chair, if I could remember it right, you made mention about uh, NGOs receiving uh, subsidies uh, or not incentives. I don't know exactly what will be the uh, the mechanics on that, but for us, you know, sulads, parang na naubos na namin ang lahat ng parangal galing sa Department of Education. <laughs> sa tingin ko po, lahat ng parangal papuri galing sa Department of Education parang naubos na namin. Kaya it, para po, uh, kukunin ko na lang tong pagkakataon ito. Magmamakaawa na lang po ako kung meron konting biyaya o ma-extract ang government pa para sa sulads. I believe we will have that, you know, integrity to our volunteers. Kasi imagine yung volunteers po namin, uh, senators, 150 of them on the ground. Brave volunteers. I have 15 uh, literacy centers in Tawi-Tawi. Bukas, magkakaharap kami ni Mayor Faisal doon sa bukas. Lilipad ako ngayon papuntang Zamboanga. Bukas, magkasama kami ni General uh, Cirilito Sobihana. Pupunta kami ng Turtle Island for the Owls Matter. You see, you see uh, aywan ko kung mag-aabuso ba kami. Tumatanggap lang ko po kami ng 3,000 pesos. Masaya na kami, yung mga volunteers namin. From, you know, from our church. Because you offer your services to the Lord. Di ba? Kaya yun yung exactly, natin. Exactly, Your oh, Honor. Yan, yan ang factor dyan na uh, uh, deciding factor. But, you know, I would like to manifest, we don't proselyte. We, we receive the awards from the Department of Education. It's because we have been good partners with LCC. I made mention about the passing rate. Nandoon po yung LCC nung panahon na yon. Yung validating team. Pumunta po sila doon sa may bundok namin, sa may bukid noon. Alam nyo, yung literacy center namin, nasa gitna po ng gira. At ito po ang mabibigay ko na testimony. Isa sa mga passers ng secondary level, binitawan talaga ang armas. Huminto siya sa pagiging NPA kasi nung subukan niyang mag-qualify, pumasa siya sa, sa secondary. So, ano pang gagawin niya? Magkakalay siya. In fact, Ma'am Jean Abad, one of the validating teams sa LCC, nag-sponsor po siya ng isang, isang uh, nakatapos ng ALS. Just to prove LCC was there, doing the validation, and for us, Mr. Chair, I would like to tell this forum that I would strongly uh, support for the institute to, for the ALS to become an institution. Mr. Chair, if I may, Mr. very short lang, in support kay Pastor Pitogo, yung tungkol dun sa financing or ano, supporting the ALS, yung isa din po, yung, yun nga, yung expansion ng ano, nung SEF kasi wala po yung ALS usually nasa formal so that's one also yun yung inaano namin sa local level talaga yung SEF mag-expand din siya for the ALS and also yung iba kaya nagso-survive yung community initiative katulad ng sinasabi ni Pastor they also ano uh, solicit support from the local government units from the LGU so that's part and another last last point yung in, yung sinusuportahan ko yung kay ano Pastor Pitogo kasi even in Lakas po, yung mga Aita nila ka Carling, 90% din po ang passing. Malaki po yung role ng community facilitators kasi nandun na sila sa community. Walang transportation, they know the culture, they know the people. Basta't i-train lang po ng mah mahigpit talaga din yung mga community facilitators natin. At tinututukan po talaga nila kasi walang, walang araw at gabi, nandun lang sila. So, the... the 
uh, not only the accreditation of learners, but also the accreditation of the role of these community facilitators na anlaki. Uh, I don't know if you can check it with the DepEd during the time of Ma'am Ma Carol, nung meron pang bus, malaki po ang passing rate talaga ng ANE that time. 2004 2000, hanggang 2010, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Pastor. One last thing, Your Honor. Ubusin ko na rin ang pagkagatawang ito baka. <laughs> uh, kasi ang, ma ang masakit po sa akin ngayon, many a times, we were suspected as NPAs in the mountain. General Bato, is, isusumbong ko ito sa iyo. Kasi as, you know, father of Sulads, particularly in Mindanao, we were, uh, naiintindihan ko naman talaga ang military. Because we were there 24-7 in the mountains, in the jungle. Nakatira po yung mga sulads namin doon, yung mga volunteers namin. 24-7. Kung ano yung calendar year ng DepEd, yun po yun ang ginagawa ng sulads. So, may isang sundalo nagtanong, bakit kayo sulads? Nandun kayo sa pinakatuktok ng bundok. Talagang NPA kayo, kasi lahat ng mga tao doon NPA. <laughs> I tell you, your honors, kami po ay Adventist. Hindi po kami NPA. Ang banner po namin ay education. Nandyan po yung Department of Education, nakakita po ng aming gawain. Sabi ko sa kanila doon, as an Adventist church member, we are pro-government. But the work of the military is not our job. Yan po ang sabi namin. Pero ang masaklap, masakit po, sana po kami ay matulungan nyo kahit sa ganyan na lang paraan, bisag sa kaanan na lang butang General Bato. Nga masabdan unta sa kadaghanan, maunawahan sana ng lahat na ang sulads ay Adventist po kami, hindi po kami NPA. So, <laughs> Sana naman, sana naman ay marinig ni President Duterte yan. Yes, Pastor, I, I understand you. Uh, anyway, kukunting portion lang yun sa military, yung misinform, yung nagdududa sa'yo. In the mere fact na sinama, uh, inibitahan ka ni Westman Com Commander, si General Subihana, na pumunta kayo doon para tumulong ka sa ELS program doon sa area niya, isa isa manifestation na talagang may tiwala sa iyo yung military pero para siguro yung sa part na bukid no may may problema ka ya inakusahan kayo somewhere in Cotabato Cotabato sige lang siguro i-engage na natin siguro sila para malaman nila talaga yung trabaho ninyo baka burido masyado yung utak ng uh, sundalo na yun sa baba na pagkita niya tao maakyat doon in PE na yun i-engage na natin para makuha nila ma Malaman nila. I will help you. I will help you. I Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. One thing, Mr. Chair, one thing. Because we have a partner named PAMAS. PAMAS means Philippine Adventist Medical Aviation Services. Gusto ko na rin malaman, malaman sa lahat dito, meron silang dalawang helicopter, meron silang limang Cessna plane. Gamit po namin yon, kasi naging partner namin. Nakakapaso po kami sa mga lilib po. So, malaking biyaya yan sa amin yung PAMAS. Mga Americans po sila, Adventist din, na naging partner, nagkamuha kami sa kanila. So, talagang masarap na may partner. At, yeah, DepEd and LCC, thank you very much. Hindi nyo na kailangan yung 100,000 na binibigay sa NGO. Ba ba kulang pa yung pang Partners lang gasolina. po namin yun. Oh. Naghanap lang kami ng gasolina para makalipan. Oh, kulang Matagal na yung kuha nyo, helicopter, aeroplano, matagal uh, About during my time, because I lead Sulads about for, this is my fourth year, mm -hmm. so nag, uh, naging partner namin yung PAMAS. Uh, kasi, yung nga, yung kinukunik kita sa istorya mo kanina, na about mm -hmm. NPA, ako, um, ako lang ito, nung tinyinti pa ako, every time inkwinto namin yung NPA sa bundok, Pag may mga sugatan ng NPA, may napapansin ka kami na civilian na helicopter, lumilipad po punta doon sa NPA, kinakarga yung uh, wounded nila. Di ba? So, yung iniisip ko, no, nung tinyinti pa ako, dahil I was in the front line, ako nagkipagira, mga tao ko na mamatay doon sa inkwintro, 
Kaya siguro yung isang sundalo na sinasabi mo na ikaw, kayo, NPA kayo dahil... Pero ngayon, na, 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 naintindihan ko na na kahit na, granting na galing sa church yung helicopter na yun, saving lives is not... Uh, walang, wala ito pinipili dapat, di ba? Ma-NPA ka man o ma-sundalo ka man, basta merong dapat isave. Isave natin yung buhay. Kahit na buhay na NPA, Pilipino pa riyan, tao pa riyan, dapat mabuhay yan. So, Ganun lang ka baba yung utak nung sundalo sa baba, kagaya ko noon, nung ako'y sikal lutinan pa. Ganun talaga yung isip ko, nandun na naman, oh, yung helicopter, lumipad na naman, kukunin naman yung wounded na NPA doon. Ganun yung experience ko noon. Kaya ngayon, naintindihan ko na, eh, dapat talaga kahit sa lahat naman, isinusuportahan ninyo. Hindi naman, uh, huwag, kang, huwag mong sabihin sa akin na pag may NPA pupunta sa'yo, humingi ng tulong, tao pa rin yan, di ba? Bigyan mo rin na tuloy. Ako magtulong mo. Kaya makikapwa tayo eh. Pero I don't, I don't believe that you are a supporter sa kalaban ng gobyerno. Wala yun. Kaya nga, tulungan kita. Maintindihan ng mga lang armed forces at ng PNP. Kaganda ng ginagawa ninyo eh. Salamat, Pastor. Parang si General Bato ay lumalambot na Bato. <laughs> Dati, nung nasa PNP, matigas na Bato. Ngayon, parang lumalambot na Bato. <laughs> <laughs> Naging senador ka lang, lumambot ka na, ikaw naman. At uh, I think uh, we also have, um, well, this is really a sensitive matter, no? In fact, uh, kausap ko ibang officials ng DepEd. Yung cases of NGO, I, I think si General can, can, can share with this. Because talagang may mga iba ibang NGO na hindi als ang pakay, no? O hindi indoctrination against government, no? So, which is counterproductive. What we want is really to indoctrinate with reading, math, literacy. But indoctrinating against government is not the objective. No? And uh, yun lang ang nakakagulo no, sa programa natin. And dahil nasabi ko gulo, because yung mga sincere na NGOs, kagaya nila pastor, nadadamay. nadadamay. That's why I asked earlier, how do you accredit? No? How do you now determine sa inyong grupo who are the ones who are uh, sincere in their uh, objective and those ones who cloak uh, their uh, modus operandi into this uh, ALS program. Because very sensitive yung matter na yan, ano? And maraming NGOs. We have a lot of NGOs floating around. No? Siguro, Mr. Chair, dadagdag, siguro, just to cite an example, itong ang salugpungan. Ano ba yung salugpungan? Is it a... Uh, um, ALS or formal schooling ba yun? Ano classification ng, A ng salugpungan? Kasi nagkaroon, nakakuha sila ng accreditation, di ba? Or... Uh, IP school po sila. So it's a uh, classified as a formal, 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 formal. formal. So hindi sila part ng ALS? Hindi po sila part. Pero po dahil nga, they're, I've been to the communities where they serve, supposed to be, no? Uh, most of their learners are teenagers na. No, so, uh, uh, IT... I'm usually LUMADS. LUMADS, yun yun ganun. Uh, but we have seen kung ano po yung quality of teaching nila. So, aside from Salugpungan, uh, formal sila IP, we also have Alcadev. Kung narinig niyo po yung Alcadev, meron pa po silang mga papeles na sinasabi nila sa amin na, no, we are acknowledged and we are accredited by DepEd. Meron po silang mga pinapakitang papel. Pero dahil po sa Department of Education naman, Pag mag yung bata, hindi namin sila pinipigilan. Kung baga, kahit na... Uh, so, so, katulad na itong sa lugpungan, di ba, um, it's considered formal... Formal. Formal schools. Mm. And then, may mga na-displays na students dito. Yung mga estudyante na yun, na naka-integrate pa sila to another school? Yes, or yes. Or are uh, they part of all, an almost ALS? All po ng mga estudyante ng Salugpungan, especially in Davao, del Nor Davao, in the region of Davao, ay naka-integrate na po ngayon sa mga formal schools. Ang ginawa po namin ay tinapatan po namin, kaming DepEd, tinapatan po namin yung mga lugar kung saan nandoon ang mga Salugpungan schools. Nag-build po kami ng mga DepEd public schools because uh, one of the reasons why they go there is because wala kami. So we built the schools and, and true enough, ang mga magulang 
nilipat nila yung mga anak nila sa DepEd schools knowing na merong na-accredited dito, na may LRN, na supportado ito ng, uh, ng gobyerno. At yung mga uh, learners nila makakatuloy from grade school, high school. Uh, kasi pag, pag hindi po accredited ang isang NGO or isang private uh, school, hindi po nakakatuloy yung estudyante nila. Walang LRN, walang accreditation. So, um, I've been to Compostela Valley, Sitio, Sitio Side 4, kung saan po nandun doon, may salagpungan school po doon na sinara po mismo ng community. And uh, with the help of, of course, no, uh, Governor Tyron Uy, sinuportahan po niya yung pag-build ng skwelahan doon. So, we have a four-classroom um, building in that area, catering to, multigrade lang po nga sila ngayon. Pero meron din pong ALS dahil napakarami pong adults doon sa lugar na yon which is about uh, napaka-tricky po ng pag-akyat kasi halos wala pong kalsada. But we've built our schools there at yun po yung pantapat po namin pag sinasabi po nila na wala kasi ang DepEd doon. But now, we're really um, building schools in those far-flung areas. You, you, have, you have heard of the Last Mile Schools Program. Um, na upgrade namin yung mga skwelahan namin sa mga malalayo, magbibuild po kami. But of course, no, uh, even the military is telling us during briefings na um, ASEC, magpadala po kayo ng mobile teachers kasi the schools take time to build, to be built. No? Ang teachers nyo lang po ang presence ng gobyerno doon at sila po yung nakakapagturo. So hand in hand po with last mile schools, is the need for mobile teachers. And of course, no, if our partners like uh, Sulads can help us, then masusolusyonan po natin yung mga pirinyalos po ng society natin. Just to share with the body, yesterday I had uh, dinner with um, si former Governor Cora Malan Malanyaon. At uh, she was saying that one of her programs there is to... Uh, convince kids to go into mainstream schools rather than itong mga salugpungan schools. <laughs> Dahil napansin na rin niya, ang pagtuturo, may literacy raw yung salugpungan eh. Ito nga, eh, din, din, sinulat ko. Abakada, A, Armalite, B, Bala, C, Canyon, D, Dinamita. Puta, anong, ito yung mga literacy, ano nila doon, ano? So, I mean, just to go to show na bata pa lang, ito, no, this is violence uh, being indoctrinated. No? So. Sir Chair, just to share with you, yun pong uh, experience ko sa Compostela Valley in Sitio Side 4, um, tinanong ko po, kasi nag-build na po ng eskwelahan, uh, nag-deploy na po kami ng teachers. So tinanong ko po yung mga teachers, uh, kamusta yung mga learners na galing ng salugpongan? Yung high school level at least. Ang sinabi po sa akin ng teacher doon, uh, ASEC, ito pong mga bata, back, hindi po sila high school level actually. So parang ang tinuturo po niya ay basic literacy, pagbabasa, hanggang po doon sa kulay, eh, pag-identify ng colors. But I've been to the place and I've seen the facilities of Salugpongan. Maganda po yung classroom, meron pong desk, meron pong blackboard. So it made me wonder, ano ba yung tinuturo nila? Maganda yung facility. Pero kung yung learner po nila, upon assessment of our DepEd teachers, ay ganun yung quality na halos hindi nakakapagbasa, pero high school level sila ang sinabi, ano po yung ginawa po nila dun sa mga classrooms? Sagot ako dyan. Ha? Hindi uturo na dun. Money over left, money over right, cover, fire, tut 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 ganun. Oh, binibigyan lang yung mga pisudyante dun ng kuwan kahoy na baril yuturuan kung paano magmaneuver, paano mag-atake ng police station, paano mag-atake ng kampo ng uh, military. Ayun. Kahit natanungin mo yung mga mga IPs na pumunta dito sa Senate para magreklamo tungkol dyan. Yun ang sinasabi nila. Mga anak nila naging ganun. Thank you. I think in a different hearing sa committee ni Senator Bato, which is the Committee on uh, Defense. Public Order. Uh, public order, we can raise this issue because it, it, my, my point here is good intentions is being destroyed because of this modus operandi. And uh, yung mga operations kagaya ni Pastor na good intentions, nasisira, nadadamay sila. No? And it, it, it ruins the objective of ALS programs 
uh, partnering with the private sector. No? Kaya nasasayang, instead of uh, uh, tapping the private sector, nagiging cautious ngayon ang gobyerno because baka magamit tayo. Uh, later on, we can ask uh, Senator Bato and the Committee of Public Order to look at this issue. No? And lastly, we have a f uh, one last uh, resource person, it's the Department of Finance. Any, any comments? So, I think this is in regards to tax incentives. No? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Senator Binay and Senator Bato. Um, sir, uh, for the Department of Finance, uh, we will still submit our official position paper on this. But initially, we would like to manifest first, uh, we have no objection on the proposed uh, donor's tax exemption on the bill. Uh, we just like to recommend that the proposal be aligned with the existing provisions under the National Internal Revenue Code. Uh, it should be aligned under that. Uh, Section 34H2 uh, to uh, specifically uh, identify the tax provision. Uh, secondly, on the proposed allocation of the Special Education Fund, as relayed by our Bureau of Local Government Finance, we also support the proposal. Uh, we were informed that the ALS can be included in the list of the beneficiaries under the Special Education Fund. Uh, we just like also to put uh, on record that with the proposal uh, uh, being pushed by the Department of Finance under the package three, the, pa the uh, valuation reform program, uh, there is also a um, provision there addressing the funding requirements of the bill on the special education fund. That's all, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Director Mendoza, any more, any additional comments? Thank you, Senator. Um, uh, it is our privilege to express to the committee uh, that based on our uh, previous council meetings, TWG meetings, and conferences, the LCC fully supports the, implement the institutionalization of the alternative learning system, including the creation of a home for the ALS at the Department of Education. We would also want to underscore the importance of value formation in the framework of the curriculum and the learning delivery of the alternative learning system since uh, there are issues on uh, illegal drugs, uh, dropouts, etc. So it would be best if we could really consider intensifying value formation in our curriculum and uh, ALS learning delivery. Thank you. Thank you. Just. Uh uh, just as a point uh, for everyone, and this is actually a very shocking figure. No? We have 24 million uh, people or 24 million of our population uh, did not graduate high school. So that's one out of four. No? And then there is one out of 10 no? or 10% 10 of our population that cannot read and write. No? So that's 10 million. So that's why there's an urgent need, sabi nga ni Mr. Quinto, there's an urgent need to put uh, a lot of attention in ALS. Because yung ALS captured na rin yung literacy. Eh. No? Captured mo na rin yung literacy. At ito, all the way to the grassroots. That's why I, I am very bullish about this bill because uh, we need to reach out to that 24 million. Sabi ko nga kay General Bato, Yung 24 million, most likely, hindi magandang trabaho yan. Mababa in sweldo. No? Uh, pag mababa in sweldo, vulnerable ka to crime, vulnerable ka to abuse, vulnerable ka to uh, trafficking. No? So, uh, we need to reach out to that 24 million. And right now, we're only addressing only 600,000 600, a year. No? So that's barely 1% of the total uh, required um, uh, required uh, enrollment. Yes. Oh. So talaga meron tayong uh, urgent need to uh, strengthen the alternative learning systems program. No? So with that, um, any last words from the body, uh, General? Dagdag ko lang, Mr. Chair, yung sinabi mo. Uh, 
despite those numbers, yung statistics na sinasabi ni Chairman, pwede ba malaman, dep uh, depend kung uh, anong rank natin sa literacy rate sa buong mundo? Are we nasa taas ba tayo, nasa baba, o sa banda? Nasa ba tayo banda? Mukhang mataas man siguro tayo, comparatively speaking, sa Asian. Uh, we will provide you with the exact data on that. Uh, we will have it sent to your office and to the office of the chairman. Uh, uh, estimation mo? Uh, Nasa taas tayo, no? 96.5% uh, po kasi ang ating literacy rate. As so, of 2013, uh, uh, that's basic literacy po, yung 96. Yung functional lang mababa tayo, which is 90%. Oo, so, and that was how many years ago? No po. So, yung latest data on that po talaga wala pa tayong ano no, wala pa tayo for that 2013 po yung huling conduct ng functional literacy rate survey uh, on behalf of init philippines we would like to reiterate our support to the senate bill 740 institu institutionalizing the alternative learning system in basic education um, and then second, we would like also to reiterate our proposal to increase the funding for alternative learning system, make it at least 1%, and derive also other sources of uh, funding from the Special Education Fund, as mentioned already, and as well as in the uh, I IRA, Internal Revenue Allocation. And then the creation of BALS, as the office that will ensure the implementation, monitoring, and uh, ensuring quality education for our uh, non-literate le learners. Thank you. Additional, sir. Uh, maliit lang ang, ang resulta ng performance ng, uh, ng task force kasi hindi liit nga ng budget or halos po. Siguro pag lumaki na yung budget, baka sakali ma maki uh, makita na natin or maramdaman yung kanilang performance. And then, uh, po, pwede po muna natin idagdag dyan sa bill uh, yung mga nag-retire na secondary teachers. T tuturo ng math, tuturo ng science. Kasi ako, math teacher din ako eh. Pwede natin utilize yung kanilang capacity either, hindi ko alam kung paano nyo ilalagay sa bill para ma-utilize sila. Sayang sila, mga bata pa rin sila, 60 years old, nang mag-retire. Kayang-kaya pa nila yan. Ang IQ nila, ma ma matataas pa. Dr. Mendoza, Director Mendoza, ang sabi yes. nyo, 90% is functional. Okay, and then 96% is basic. Basic cannot, basic is you can read and write. So, 4% functional is much higher, my comprehension. My comprehension. So, yung 4% cannot read and write. Correct? So, that is uh, 4 million out of the 100 million. More or less. No? Just make it simple. So, more 4 million of our population cannot read and write. 90 per 10 million cannot comprehend. Functionally. May definition po kasi, Senator, yung functional literacy. Uh, but ma ma more or less. More, more or, or less, less like uh -oh. that. Yes, sir. I mean, they can read and write. Di lang nila maintindihan. Correct? But the more crucial is that 4% four per, four percent, uh, 4 million na uh, hindi no read and write. And okay. Mr. Chair, dun sa 10 million, cannot count then. Part? No. Uh, yung 10 million po, yung 10%, yung they can read, they can write, they can count, but they do not have the functional literacy. Pero hindi cannot add and subtract. They can, they, ah, they can, can, they can. So 4% lang yun. 4% four four lang yun. po yung no, they cannot read, they cannot, they cannot compute. Pero, that's as of 2013, Senator. Pero kung yung binasa nila, bisaya, maintindihan nila yun. Pero pag binasa nila English, hindi nila maintindihan yun. So, very, very subjective pa rin yung functionalism mo dyan. Di ba? Functional literacy. Dahil uh, pag bisaya binabasa niya, hindi... Alam na alam niya yun. Bakit asa? Ganun niya ba minimeasure yung literacy? Yung um, based on sa English at hindi dun sa sa dialect nila. 
Uh, good afternoon po. Yung pong literacy natin ay siya yung marunong bumasa sumulat. Pag sinabing functional, alam niyang basahin at alam niya kung paano niya gagamitin in a particular situation. De, but yung what language? Ano. Any language po. Yung any kasi language. multilingual na po tayo. So any language? Any last words, Asak? Any, any um, last words? Again, maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair, for um, filing this bill and being intent on seeing to it na ang ALS po ay may angat ang kalidad. At sinasabi nga po namin, second chance education should not be second class. So with the help of this committee and of course with, us, with your support, we look forward to having uh, uh, revitalized, reinvigorated at... Um, ALS program that can actually respond to the changing times and to the needs also of our out-of-school youth and adults. Uh, we will submit our position konti lang pong um, pag-aaral pa ng kaunti so that we can uh, give it to you hopefully within the week. Well, uh, to, to everyone, no? please submit your position paper on or before December 5 okay. and we will have a technical working group on December 12, no? 9 a.m. So, uh, para po, we can uh, hopefully sponsor it before our break. Mr. Chair, before tayo mag-close, um, can I just ask, hindi ko lang kay Director Mendoza or kay ASEC, can you submit to the committee yung data lang ng, uh, meron ba kay literacy, illiteracy map wherein um, nakasegregate, kunyari, sa Region 1, ano yung mga probinsya, na ganito yung percentage ng literacy niya. Yes, Senator. Uh, uh, the PSA has that. Actually, it's not the council who owns that. It's the PSA who conducted the survey. We could provide you that 2013 copy. 2013. And, yeah, with breakdown per region. Literacy and rate per region. And sa listahanan, wala silang ganong breakdown. Wala, no? Ang DSWD. Wala, wala, wala. I, I, I have not seen list tahanan, but what we were told there is that as they map communities, nalalaman po nila on a household level, yung pong literacy levels na mga members of household. But we have not, I have not really actually seen yung data nila. That's why we... But you have a copy. Uh, wala pa po dahil kailangan po namin magmoa. It's very basic. I think they should provide you with that data dahil ano namang gagamitin ng DSWD sa literacy data they won't be the one teaching them no? it's DepEd who will be teaching them but uh, later on uh, uh, in the case of literacy we filed a resolution to look into this deeply and uh, we'll ask the support of Center B9, Center Bato to uh, find uh, some solutions in terms of fighting literacy. Tama Center Bato ito yung gera natin eh, no? literacy eh. And we need to uh, call upon all agencies, no? uh, DSWD, uh, DILG, to uh, be able to come up with solutions in fighting lit illiteracy. No? All right, so with that, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you very much for your participation. And uh, hopefully we can get this bill uh, off the ground. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Uh, meeting is adjourned.